welcome back to this podcast series uh, where we interview different Guru Sikhs on different topics. And uh, last year, myself and Bayman Deep Singh, uh, we sat down and spoke about the topic of 1984. Um, I think the title was um, like the Operation Blue Star and just like the a general overview of that topic. And we spoke about things such as, you know, the non Side resolution, um, kind of from June the 1st onwards, a day by day account, just a general overview and some of the different operations that took place as well at that time. And it was a great video, a great overview uh, that we did last year. Uh, but today we've got by Harjinder Singh Ji, and we're going to be talking about some more specific stuff. And we've got a lot of questions as well, especially from that podcast last year, Mandeep Singh. Uh, a lot of people had a lot of things to say, a lot of positive things. But of course, especially with this, uh, this topic, which is quite a um, touchy topic for many people, um, you get a lot of hate and a lot of more kind of rubbish coming out as well, right? Yeah, I think there's a lot of ignorance because mm. um, the media is obviously very powerful. The Indian state media is still very powerful. So what people are hearing mainstream is mm. quite far from the truth. 100. And I think that has subconsciously sat within people's minds for many, many years, even our own family members. And as a result of it, you kind of get this knee-jerk reaction whenever Jadassi is mentioned. Mm. Um, and those narratives come out to the forefront. And that's mm. what we're here to unpick. 100% under uh, by Harjinder Singh Ji. Just to start off with, uh, just one simple question. What comes to mind when the the phrase 1984 comes up in your mind or somebody says it to you? For me, it's uh, the attack on Darbar Sahib, the Delhi, Kanpur, post Indira Gandhi assassination, massacres of Sikhs and displacing of Sikhs. And the whole of 84 is a year after June, especially for the last six months of that year. The Sikhs are continuously persecuted mm. and there's blackouts of state media. So that's what comes to my mind immediately when I think of 1984. Anji. And um, when it comes to this topic itself, because you've done a lot of research into it, uh, and uh, next year is 40 years right, since 1984. Um, so what has changed then from 1984 to the present day? What do you think has been the shift uh, overall, if you could just summarize it? It's like any movement. So every movement has a peak trough. And uh, so after 1984, like the first march that we did in the UK, I went with my family from Karma Godre in Warsaw, so Gurnana Godre, West Bromwich Street. And I remember every family member of mine went to that march. So like all our family at the time were not, we were all non Amartari. So my direct family and all my Buaya, Chache, everyone was like non Amartari. But yet every family member went. So we were like three to four to a seat on two seats on the coaches. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so it was like the the roars at the time was like through the roof. So if you think it was like, it's just people who just couldn't fathom that the Indian government attacked the Bar Sahib. So even at the Majara, like we go to the Majara now, it's more like a Nagar Kirtan. Yeah. But then everyone was just screaming their lungs through and everything. And literally at some of the Majara, they attacked the Indian consulate when they walked past it. Mm. So like the feeling at that time, in 84 was completely different. And then eight, 94, I take Amrath, so that was 10 years hmm. after 84, Anna. But on the, the, the 10 years, I remember I went to the Majara and uh, there was a, a crew of us from Warsaw, and a lot of them were a lot older than me, of Sengs. And they had barricades outside where the Indian consulate was. I remember as a 16 year old, we stood outside the Indian consulate as 10, 15 of us all a bit G'd up, whatever, and I'm like doing nare in like tunes and stuff like that. And we stood there and started doing the nare. And then after about five, 10 minutes, the police started moving the barricades forward, yeah. walking towards us. So sort of threatening us to move. Yeah. And I turned around and looked and the whole Majara had passed us. So the whole Majara had walked past behind us. Like, I'm not saying we were at the front, wherever we were in the Majara, but we were like literally 10, 15 guys standing there and just giving it some like as young people, you know what I mean? That's mm. all we were doing. We were like, and But the whole Majara walked past us. And then when the police started moving the barricades, I looked around, saw that had happened. And then after a while, we were like, everyone else has left us. Yeah. So we walked off as well. But that was like, a, that was quite shocking to me on the 10 years because it's like, wait one minute, we're here for this. And we can't stand outside the Indian consulate who we're actually protesting against. Yeah. And actually give it some for a half an hour or an hour. So that was me as a 16 year old. And then I remember I stood on the coach for three hours 
just thinking and then I shall come to the next summer sanjara na so even my sikhis from 84 or from the majara and whatever you want to say na we were always around people who were in the sangarsh so we saw people die from families around us so we've seen that then we've also seen like santana singh's family by amrik singh's family so we've seen even those parivars and we've done things in those families and so this obviously I didn't expect to see it in this but there's families within our circle who've been part of the sangarsh who've lived the sangarsh through their families through their sareer through their emotional turmoil the torture and whatever it may be they've lived the sangarsh and so it's not for me it's not like a hobby horse we're not here doing 84 prachar because it's something to get a bit of hype or think we're like knowledge one and I go to India regularly and the Indian state follows me it's not a big deal and it's like a normal thing for us because this is what our sangarshi parivars do but it's it's more about from the 10 years I saw that and then after that it because of my whole life like from an 8 year old even and it's like on my personal instagram some of you might have seen a post about 2 days ago when I'm about 7 years old and we did a sponsored walk from Coventry to Warsaw and that was for uh the sangarshana so even the money from that we were like kids and but we were always dragged to programs on sundays and stuff so we were around people who were actually like getting terrorism charges getting house raids by mi5 and things like that. so we were always around those people it was nothing subnormal or abnormal to us and and there was obviously people like by normal singh and who was quite gopt on his involvement with babar khalsa even though he was quite active at certain points and but then after that after i take amrit then it becomes a thing where i have to talk about it because no other pracharak at the time was really doing it so like i became like the sort of spokesman the uh what you say the the stereotyped 84 speaker <laughs> like basic sikhi podcast first podcast to come on is about 84 you didn't talk, call me for anything else so i've, I've been like <laughs> i've been stereotyped as the 84 yeah, man yeah. and it was never like i wanted to become that person and i remember when i look back like how bad my talks were back then when i was 18 in terms of what they become now in terms of the knowledge and the growth of people and but so obviously i became like this 84 sort of molded speaker there was a few other people like shira punjab did it at certain points and i did it from south hall but really it was like and then indi smith became like the second person after that and but really for a good 10 years it was just me and people were just scared to speak about it yeah, yeah, yeah. so it was about because of the suppression so if you think 94 95 the movement sort of ends but people were still scared to speak about it so if you think of jaggi jol now in the case people are scared to go to india just because yeah. they're living in glasgow even though they're not linked to anything yeah, yeah, yeah. so there was a lot of that as well so over the years that changed and then obviously we got into writing the books and things as well so robert hawks and gave us our gist right the jeevania and we wrote game of love and then we got some people academically uh, criticized me and said there's no academia in your book yeah and there was and there wasn't but the problem was the jeevania that we took were from avazikom this but this and the people who scanned them in didn't take the page numbers or the dates it wasn't sourced properly yeah it wasn't sourced properly so even when we tried to source some of the data we couldn't even after the book was published and but it was more about putting our own voice out there because the indian government has like 99 books and we have one mm. which is of our view and i knew by writing the game of love once it's written you can quote it yeah it doesn't matter if it's not it academically the resource, right? sourced yeah. you can still quote it so it was that it was more about putting that down for that book and that i think we published that i think in 2008 again on vasaki so it was the 30 years of 78 anna if my math is right yeah yeah 2008 so we right. released that at bedford and even at that program this is so hilarious like what goes on behind closed doors i'll say it today because it's been enough years we didn't know at the time when we did the book release we went to meet sing sai pai ranjit singh who killed the narangari gurbachana and we tried to get him to the uk and he said to me he was in france so we drove to paris and we met him and he said to me he said the only way you're going to get to me to the uk is the home secretary has to approve my visa because they've told me in non certain terms you're never going to be allowed into the uk and i said okay then that's not going to work so what if we get you on zoom he said you can do that so what we did is we at that program we were going to release the book we put him on a zoom call in the diwan oh, wow. and he did a speech on the zoom call but we didn't know at the time the nanankari's headquarters for the uk things in bedford <laughs> <laughs> so they told the police that we are doing this smog we were doing supna sahib all day for bana kente and then we'd look like national coaches or transport numbers and stuff and the police came to the godraji in the day first and said like or the day before and they said do you need police 
for this program. And they go, they're like, what for? They go, you got like a national program. They go, we don't need extra policing. Then they turned up the next day and they saw it was like Bart going on. They go, it's a peaceful program. They go, what do you expect it to be? And like people on the ground who, who organized it with us, they were getting it because we put fake numbers on there, like burner phones. <laughs> we were going to get none of it. But uh, in the end, plain clothes police came to the program. Wow. Sitting in the duan. And we could recognize the police. We're not stupid. And like, yeah, mm. you know what I mean? Mm. So he's like, but even that, like, so that's 30 years after 78. So he's, they made that, the Nurant Guard is, I don't know why, yeah. Or this was the, this is what the police sort of let through afterwards, Anna, through the communications was basically, we were told, you are going to do your program, then do a walk protest to their Astan and smash it up. <laughs> so like, we're doing a repeat of 1978 in Bedford, you know what I mean? On the 30 years anniversary. <laughs> So it was, just, it was just crazy. And I saw that some of the things, like, we can talk about them now, because right? it's been so many years, but, like, we see things from our, in front of our eyes that we can't publicly talk about. And so even this podcast, you might have to edit some stuff when I start talking, you know what it's like, innit? Because we can't make sense yeah. of public domain, Hannah. Right? But, yeah, so we write the book. And then after that, uh, obviously, Jenna Barad gets scratched on his throat in London. And then I just, uh, I just mentally lost it. Because he was on the TV saying the same narrative after yeah. he got stabbed. We did try to get our uh, court injunctions on him to stop him leaving the UK, but that didn't work out. So Sea Council UK at the time had contacted me and they were trying to find like a, a victim from 84 who was actually in the attack. And there was one BB in Smedic, but I don't know if they ever tracked her down. Huh? But uh, so he really enraged me when he went back on the media. And then there was a BBC Nihal talk show, which is on the basic Sikhi channel. Yeah. Huh? And he was supposed to come on that. Then he pulled out when I got booked. So it was all a bit strange what went on. He didn't go on it. And then Mark Tully came on. And Mark Tully sounded like the gov Indian government uh, sort of mouth. He, he's written a book as well, hasn't he? Mark yeah, Tully, yeah. yeah. But Mark Tully was very uh, pro-India on that okay. debate. But then they did me over because I was sitting in the studio in Birmingham and they kicked me out of the room after one hour. And it carried on for another hour. Mm, without you. Yeah. Do you get it? So it's it all a bit like... And uh, so we did, we then wrote, I then wrote uh, Reflections of 1984 in two months because I was enraged by Brad. So I just sat down and just wrote the book in two months, all academically sourced, yep. all the references and everything. And obviously like people like Dr. Gurdeep Singh, who's passed away in another Sikh channel, ex-CEO, uh, I remember him saying to me, because I've been around, I was around uh, Gurdeep all his life, Anna, and I, I don't know if he was a doctor, I can't remember now, but Gurdeep said to me at the time, he said, there's nothing new in there, in the book. Yeah. But he's still good because obviously we're Prana and Garshi Bande who's seen this, but obviously we had to recreate it. So, I mean, Ganesha Kaur's probably done a better uh, book than me, Lost in History, 1984. Yeah. Hers is probably better than mine, but it was more about just putting our view out there and putting it there. So it's, it's mm -hmm. there for people to access. So when these days come around and then Asian Network does another show and whatever goes on, anyone can pick that book up now and have the answers. Yeah. So it infuriates me when people have talk shows or call-ins and our Sikhs can't give the narrative yeah. when it's in the book. And if you want to do it for free, yeah, anyone watching this, what you do is you go into Google, you put in your question, you put in my name and my book, yeah, and Google will give you the quotation from the book yeah. for free. I'll give you the access for the like two, three pages. So you can read it online, like under Google Books. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can just go to that section and find it there and then. I even cheat now. I Google my own book sometimes when I can't find my own stuff. I wish you told me yeah. this like three, four years ago. Yeah. <laughs> it's a really easy way to do it, but you only get limited access. Obviously, Google will only show you like five pages uh, at that yeah. point, and or it'll say these where the quotes are. So you can get around it that way. So mm. 84 is like, it's it's in my blood, and I can't take it out. Mm. So it's it's just, uh, it's embedded in our, our sort of nature now to speak about it. And then obviously a few weeks ago, basics. Uh, and uh, us did a collaboration. We did that talk at Brunel University. Mm. And Brunel University, there was a threat made to the university to cancel the talk. Yeah. yeah. So it's just like, and then we saw the people who were part of the threat before when we left. <laughs> so when we left, me and Harai Seng, it was raining. We saw some guys, three of them, and they all looked down. And we saw them approaching. And I thought Harai was like deep in conversation. So I thought, enter the Kyanagar Jehan Badabadanga Shuru, Gyan Takam Shuru, because they were on the right of me. So this is literally when we walked out the building and they looked at us and they all looked down. So this is how like intelligence operatives work. Mm. So I thought you're looking down because you're scared or you know that we're the ones. Mm. So it's either you like literally, they're literally there where the, the light is in her. So it's, it's going to happen now. Isn't it? Like, either they do something or we do something. Mm. And we walked past, they didn't do nothing. 
for me no je ta ba cha like after two days and I asked her right and he said yeah clock them he said I seen them cuz I thought he's just like deep in conversation so even those sort of things and I it's like we it's always on the it's always there and I but now the even in the UK now it's changed because there's now right wing hindus who have come from india who live in the uk who were part of the leicester riots and fights with the muslims whatever we're going to call it and there cuz so people in leicester police officers and family members said to me they were all the people causing the problems weren't the leicester natives let's say yeah it was the hindu students from india interesting who came here so it's like so these things are now becoming like where in the past when we went to universities kisi de jorte nahi sige sanu ko scan de hon ho gaya ke ek pehli bari hoya you know what i mean but i was like let them come on that day we didn't have one person from their lot coming to the talk who the thought that we didn't know and but sanu pata singa but the head of security was in there anyway throughout the talk so it's like the narrative over the 40 years has changed but in terms of the sangat the sangat's roast was through the roof in 84 10 years like my little example it worn off a bit just under example you said um you were surprised w- what were you surprised at were you surprised at the fact that the police were pushing you back or that the the sangat had moved on no the sangat moving on the police moving forward that's their job yeah yeah because yeah. they want us to move so it's like a little mini threat isn't it yeah, we're yeah. going to keep moving the barriers until you move anna yeah and there's a lot of police about like 40 jali pe jaa jane singe but it was like for me it was more the sangat like where's your dad it's a 10 year thing yeah and you can't just stand there You're all you, scared of getting foretold or like do you do you find that we're still in the same situation where we want to talk about these things but in a very passive way and what what do you think the solution to that is is that enough I think it's it's what you started with and that ignorance we're ignorant but also at the same time it's like we've all got singh behind our name yeah and I, and at the seek to inspire camp and good gil singh was talking about his com- one of his conversations with amrit pal singh and amrit pal singh said to good kid it's quite offensive to be fair but he said to him he said he said you're like a domesticated lion yeah 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 he said to see barle seket you like domesticated lions yeah but we're sitting here as the lion in the jungle is yeah. we getting attacked yeah, yeah and it's true in punjab that is true and a lot of people do say like to see khalistan de nare ethe laade dilli ja ke lawana je thade ko hagi hana but our things do it there like yeah. i've taken drivers to programs in punjab where our sangs organize the programs and you you turn up and there were any khalistans in the bad t-shirts <laughs> and you're like ha huh? yeah <laughs> and then like the driver sat in the car from haryana listened to the smagam on going on in the godara and he said when i got back in the car we were going back to haryana i said he goes e ni to bagavat kar de ne na sarkar ne chak lana and i said tenu nahi pata ye pindar wale de bande hai inna da koi fark nahi payna inna da roz da kam hai so there's like a massive disparity yeah, of yeah. sorts There's some some people are like fully for it or some people are yeah. like, oh that's alien right yeah but it's also you know mandeep singh it's like you know like we think you can't talk about it yeah jinne galla karde ho ta ajta karde ya wo to hate nahi ke in punjab as well yeah, 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 Do you know yeah. what i mean so it's like the, the, you know that fear factor of us is like that domesticated lion in it. we only want to walk within the circles we don't want to go outside that line of our like you know the law or yeah, our family yeah. that there are uh, yeah or whatever it may be and, and that's me included and huh? I write books yeah and I try to be pretty with words and but the thing is can I really do it in the in the Punjab and so I've like I I balance on a tight knot with the with the sarkar and you don't push it in their face too much because they won't let you go to India then mm-hmm. it's a fine balance and yeah. I I find myself in that kind of same balance and I guess it comes a point where maybe you kind of if you if you do fully commit then there will be certain limitations on you how do you how do you find that balance I, I think it See cuz like I'm old now and as you old and age you you like smart enough a bit and yeah first you just say stuff yeah. like I used to have a passport with the orange of the mala <laughs> that says a lot <laughs> yeah that's when my passport photo used to be and I remember one of my friends who was a munna he met me at the airport at Heathrow airport he came up to me said for the and I didn't know this guy at the time and and he said to me he goes sing he goes you going to india I said yeah he goes you went the orange of the mala said and I go here's my passport Oh for two year. I go I'm going to do I can't change the passport. For. And he's like you're psycho. <laughs> and he told me that like a few years later when I became friends with him he's like but he's, that was like you know the judge bar. Yeah. yeah as a youth. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Cuz when you're young you have that Hannah. Yeah. And I was like I don't care the burden on the burden cuz for us it was more a pervadic thing as well because obviously family members people you're around and things as well not like blood related but just generally within the circles Hannah. Yeah. And you're like so cuz you've seen this and God like sometimes you're so through the roof but in terms of the sangat in the UK So 84 happens all the coach 10 years it's a bit down 
And then people just fall off. The movement sort of ends, uh, the arm struggle in terms of that. And then the Jathabanya start losing people. Then the Jathabanya start losing control of the Goddare. Yeah. And then it becomes a phase of a lot of people are anti Khalistan. But now it's been completely reversed. Mm. So it's gone full circle. Now all the students that come to the UK, they're all pro Khalistan. Mm. My rest of the are in Punjab now. They just play something last thing, tracks juggle, tracks. Yeah, you there. see, I remember. So there's just non stop now. Yeah. So it's all, it's re- reversed. So because what it is, even KPS Gill admits in his book, and one of his quotes is that he says, like, he finished the militancy. But he said all the reasons why the militancy started are still present in Punjab. Mm. So they haven't addressed the core issues, which is true. So the militancy can restart. So the, all the antecedents to the militancy were about economic issues, disparity with Punjab, river waters. It was mostly economic. It wasn't really religious. It was socio-economic issues. And, and they still exist. And even, the like... People try and make a rift between Hindus and Sikhs. Hindus and Sikhs are one in Punjab. Yeah. If you get one mad person from the Shiv Sena making a bian and then doing a mafi nama the next day, but generally, like only like eighty percent of my friends when I go to India are Hindus. Mm. It's like that's our circle, and not because we went out, but that's just who we associate with sometimes. Mm. And earlier when we asked the question about um over the forty years. Um, you got quite emotional at one point talking about, I guess you can say your close relationship with a lot of those people, mm-hmm. uh, those Guru Sikhs. Um, so could you just share an example of just, you know, something inspirational for the Sangha um, of some Guru Sikhs during that time, during that movement um, and what they were doing? What was it like at that time in 1984 and the months afterwards? So prior to 1984, obviously, I know there's, there's different groupings Anna, of Sangs who are active. So the All India Sikh Students Federation is basically the youth. Mm. And that's mass participation. So the All India Sikh Students Federation, I think it's banned in 83 possibly. Or April 84, I can't remember the dates now. Anna. If someone Googles it, you can check it. Anna. But So the, that organization was actually banned. It's like BOSS getting banned in the like UK. Sikh society is getting banned. Yeah. 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 So the, the Sikh Students Federation was basically banned. So that's that. So that's like the mass movement. Of doing camps on Prajara and Amrit Shakona, whatever, and even membership became a requirement for you to be Amrit Tariana. So you got Payam Leek Singh leading that. You got Santana Singh uh, sort of banned from speaking at the time with, from the, by the Akali. So all Santana Singh's speeches are only up to 83 at the end, Hannah. 84, Sant doesn't speak Manji Sahib again. So there's tension between the Akalis. But then you got Babur Khalsa Sengs, who uh, Gopta was doing like missions, Hannah. And then you got Harminder Singh Sandhu. So what people say is Bayam Reek Singh wasn't actually violent. He was not vi- in, involved in any violent acts. But it was Harminder Singh Sandhu who was running the dismissed regiment. So for years I've known it was him. But I could never come out on camera and say it. But in the last year or two, people have made interviews and proved it was him. And come out and said it was him. So I've even people I've interviewed, I've asked them on purpose. I've just slid it in there. <laughs> the question. So that's got legitimated now. So the dismissed regiment and... The Babur Khalsa were actually assassinating people prior to 84. And they were going around killing people who were uh, murdering Sikhs or torturing Sikhs or making a lot of uh, inflammable speeches against Sikhs. Anna. Just on that, sir, I think most people would have heard of the Babur Khalsa. Who's the Dismesh the, the Regiment? Could you see, just. See, that's what it is. The Dismesh Regiment was such a gopped organization. Basically, they worked on the premise of something else, Singh. And they were, they were given certain hits to do, Hannah. Okay. But the Dismesh Regiment, it's, it's always been clouded in mystery. Mm. But that's how good they were. Yeah. So Sandhu was the leader, but they did hits, but no one ever knew who it was. Okay. So it was always clouded in history, in, in mystery, Hannah. So that was the greatness of the Smish Regiment as an organization, Hannah, in terms of how they function. But in Mark Tully's book as well, like we talk about fake encounters, Hannah. Uh, the Punjab police were already doing fake encounters prior to 84. Mm. So that's already a given that they were already started doing that, Hannah. So in terms of the question, like, different people or different stories. And there's different stories from each of these organizations. Dal Khalsa existed as a political body and was talking about Khalistan prior, Hannah. But there's always questions about Dal Khalsa prior to 84, like where they put up by people and things like that. I'm not saying they were or not, but they were just a political body, really. A lot of the things were good, like Ajinder Singh who hijacked planes and things like that to get something nice and free from jail. But in terms of, I'll just mention one uh, story, Hannah, which is, so Bibi Abkar Kaur was the leader of the Women's Sikh Students Federation. Yeah. So if you think of it like the Sikh Students Federation is banned. 
then you got a female. So if you think on a human level, if your if that's your sister, would you want her to go out? It's a banned organization in, in India. In India. <laughs> in India. Mm-hmm. And then you're Sikhs, you're a minority. You know the Punjab police is already killing your people. And she's your sister and she's the leader. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then uh, Harmandir Singh Sandhu gets married, I think in April, 84. Or May. I think it was actually May. I'm probably getting the dates mixed up on her. But uh, he gets married a few weeks before the attack. And the person he gets married to is Bibi Paramjit Kaur. So he gets married to her and it's literally the attack happens four weeks later. And a lot of people, especially young people who like think, oh, I'm going to be a karku, I'm going to do this, I'm going to get involved in Sangash, I won't get married. All these things got married. And they all had kids. And most of them knew they were going to die. Mm. It weren't that they didn't know because they had the kamai that they knew they were going to die as well. So it went that. So these Bibiya, Bibi Paramjit Kaur, Bibi Upkar Kaur, we all say they got shaheed in the attack. So from what my research tells me now, which I, I, we don't, no one really knows the true story. But there's a, there's a interview that I've done last year when we interviewed by Jagir Singh Mahantana. And in that, he said he meets them after 6th of June, the Bibiya. So he escapes from the complex. Yeah. But he meets the Bibiya and they're still alive. And they're like, what are you doing? What are you doing here? And he's like, what are you lot doing? Get out of here. Anna? And so they have this like sort of conversation and he said to them, like, you learn to get out of here because they're going to get identified. And they were shocked that he's still alive. And they, they were asking him what happened to the Akal Taksai, but he was at Baba Deep Singh Sheed Ganj. So he didn't move from there. That's where he was in the complex. So he got out on, on the 6th after. And uh, I said to him when I interviewed him, I said, so I said, I've heard that they got Shaheed. So what happened to them? And he said, from what he knows is that after the attack, so obviously the army and the security personnel start combing other areas of the complex or just outside where they hadn't been. Because there's a lot of adjoining buildings that people don't realize. And, and there were exit routes which were completely open behind the Akal Taksaib on the sides as well, on certain sides, the Galliano and stuff. And so the Bibian got out to another house. And then uh, the story goes that what they did is the army or whoever it was doing the combing operation at the time would have been the army. They came to that room. And one of the Bibian just opened fire. So it's that thing, and I like we talk about Mir Manu's jail and like Bibya jumped into the coup at Lahore, and they mm. sing singing in the Godaraya to save the Ijat, Yeah. So this Bibya knew that I'm Sandhu's wife, I'm a Pakar Kor, the Kitana Kite Nanu Patalagjana. Uta n niatiana, it's gonna happen. There's no way of getting out of that. So they tro- chose the gun. Mm-hmm. So they just opened fire, then the the army just killed everyone in the room. So the army just it's cool. But it's that thing, Anna. You get married four weeks before the attack. You're a female. All the oppression in Punjab. You get out the attack. You could have escaped. Mm. You could have left. Yeah. Because these where these Seng escapes, they could have escaped from Anna. So even the Bubble Khalsa Sengs, they all escaped from this side of the complex as well. Yeah. And they all went into like different houses and things like that. And everyone was incognito for a year. So people were declared Shaheed Anna. Even people live one, two roads away from here. We declared Shaheed Anna. And the families did their sedge parts and found out a year later, Gene Daya. <laughs> yeah. But it's just like, it's so these people, we can't comprehend. Anna? We think of like, oh, may I want to check it? It's like an easy thing, isn't it? Put a little card up. Yeah, I'll get my head in it. But when it comes to it, like, would you choose death or would you choose to escape? Anna? And then would you choose to gamble to allow yourself to get arrested mm. and live? Yeah. Even if you might get raped, but it's like choosing death over all of that is like the extreme, isn't it? Because your judge is that and we're not leaving and then we're doing that as well. And then the other one, the other Bibi is a uh, Pai Fajr Singh's uh, sister-in-law, Hana, who didn't leave a camera in Darbar Sahib in the Prakarma because Maharaj was there. Right. Right. Yeah. And her name was Shaheed Onada Vinaw Paranjit Kauri, Hana. But her photo only came out like in the last 10 years. So that didn't exist. And the photo we've got of her now, it's, it's on the internet, Hana. So she didn't leave because Maharaj's route was there. So she didn't leave. But it's like that Jajaba, we can't comprehend. Like we talk about Sikhs in the 18th century. But they, it, was, it wasn't that these people didn't know. They knew everything and they're more saying, he, he swims to the Akal Taksaib in the attack. 
जजबा ਸ਼ਹੀਦੀਆਂ ਵੀ ਪਾਈਆਂ ਸਿੰਘਾਂ ਨੇ ਮੇਰੇ ਸਾਹਮਣੇ ਅਨੀਗੋਸ ਕੋਈ ਬੰਦਾ ਸੀ ਨਹੀਂ ਆਉਣ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਪ੍ਰਕਰਮਾ ਚ ਇਜ਼ ਐਨੀ ਵਨ ਐਂਟਰ ਦ ਪ੍ਰਕਰਮਾ ਵੀ ਕਿਲ ਦਮ ਉਹ ਇਜ਼ ਓਨਲੀ ਵੈਨ ਦੇ ਬਿੰਗ ਦ ਟੈਂਕਸ ਦੈਟ ਦੇ ਐਕਚੁਅਲੀ ਕੈਨ ਐਂਟਰ ਬਿਫੋਰ ਦੈਟ ਵੀ ਕਿਲ ਐਵਰੀਵਨ ਕੋਈ ਕੋਈ ਬੰਦਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਛੱਡਿਆ ਜਿਨ੍ਹਾਂ ਨੇ ਪੈਰ ਪਾਰ ਲਿਆ ਆਈ ਗੋ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਭੱਜ ਗਿਆ ਮੈਦਾਨ ਛੱਡ ਕੇ ਉਹ ਨਿਕਲ ਗਿਆ ਸ਼ਾਇਦ ਕਿ ਬੋਲ ਦਾ ਨੋ ਵਨ ਕੈਮ ਆਟ ਲਾਈਵ ਹਨ ਫੋਰ ਦੇ ਅਟੈਕ ਐਂਡ ਟੋਲ ਦੇ ਬ੍ਰਿੰਗ ਦੇ ਟੈਂਕਸ ਇਨ ਹਨ ਬਟ ਹੀ ਆਲਸੋ ਸੈਡ ਹੀ ਸੈਡ ਲੁਕ ਹੀ ਗੋਸ ਉਹ ਤਾਂ ਬਿਆ ਵਾਂਗ ਸੀ ਗਾ ਹੀ ਸੈਡ ਲਾਈ ਹੀ ਗੋਸ ਲਾਈ people are getting shit and the things is like laughing and joking like they're already <laughs> like nothing because we read about this atheist because bro I saw it in my eyes in front of me and he escaped to tell the story and but he's like he's very influenced by what he saw in those things as well so it's it's a, we can't comprehend you know mentally or human wise it's superhuman and you, you look at cartoons don't you <laughs> and uh, superhero stories and but it's, you can't comprehend it's like think of it like now we're sitting in handsworth please come and surround the house yeah and we've got the worst armory that we can have the worst guns yeah and we're like we're taking boys we're laughing yeah we're taking boys come on there's only 500 of them there's five of us we can take them mm. yeah and it's that thing and it's like we can't comprehend like this is like the whole might of the indian army because even an army official who is in the uk who's a sikh kind of he started uh, criticizing me he said how can you say they use shells because shells explode everything and then we found like uh, actual shells and mortars that were dropped yeah and cuz he couldn't comprehend mm. that it was true he thought it was a lie yeah because you wouldn't use that in a civilian attack usually but, yeah <laughs> but they had to use it cuz they couldn't penetrate cuz everything failed so they had to use extreme measures even the indian army they couldn't penetrate zero commando sitte oh sare marte yeah so it's like they couldn't comprehend that we can't penetrate these guys at all two questions first of all um that spirit you're talking about we hear right in history and it's is is really amazing quite refreshing to hear that spirit being brought back and these stories of these cargoes and the the arm sangat and the things from that point um reinvigorating that spirit with regards to the things and seeing that are married very shortly before the attack why why do you think they got married knowing very well what was going to happen and secondly what do you think evoked that spirit that they were laughing literally what they were swimming across bullets and they were laughing among, amongst bullets yeah, yeah. the kind of spirit we hear from the times of the missiles and the times of guru sahib's time and also how do we reinvigorate that within the western world the two questions yeah this two th- questions ella so the, the answer is karm and spirit you can't stop the wheel of karm people say why did santan la singh sit at the kal tak sahib why didn't do the attack somewhere else karm nahi matter da ਹਨ ਹੈ ਸਕੀ ਆਦੀ ਪੰਗਤੀਆਂ ਨਾ ਬੱਬਾ ਦੱਸ ਤੂੰ ਕਾ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਲੇਖ ਨਾ ਮਿਟੀ ਲੇਖ ਨਾ ਮਿਟੀ ਹੈ ਸਕੀ ਹਨ ਸੋ ਯੂ ਕਾਂ ਯੂ ਕਾਂ ਚੇਂਜ ਦਾ ਉਹ ਤਾਂ ਲੇਖ ਲਿਖਿਆ ਸੀਗਾ ਨਾ ਲਿਖਿਆ ਸੀਗਾ ਕਿ ਰੰਡੀ ਆਊਗੀ ਸੋ ਸਾਕੀ ਚ ਲਿਖਿਆ ਨਾ ਕਿ ਰੰਡੀ ਆਊਗੀ ਫੌਜ ਆਊਗੀ ਹਨ ਕਿਲਾ ਬਣਾਇਆ ਜਾਊਗਾ ਨਾ ਦਰਬਾਰ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਦਾ ਸੋ ਇਟਸ ਆਲ ਇਨ ਦ ਇਨ ਦ ਪਵਿਕ ਬਚਨ ਐਨੀਵੇ ਸੋ ਇਟਸ ਆਲ ਦੈਟਸ ਆਲ ਰਿਟਨ ਯੂ ਕਾਂ ਚੇਂਜ ਦ ਲੇਖ ਸੋ ਦ ਸੈਂਗਸ ਗੈਟ ਮੈਰਿਡ ਲੇਖ ਲਿਖਿਆ ਸੀਗਾ ਹਨ ਦਰਬਾਰ ਜੀ ਦਾ ਦੇ ਗਟ ਅਪਲਾਈ ਨਾ ਦਸ ਤੇ ਕਰਮ even the children that they're going to have who live after the attack that's their karm they can't live there so mm-hmm. it's that it's that dur and that jihana there was a saying who came and did granthi ji uthe hana in smedic yeah veer saying se godana and you all know bible deep singana uh, ustad ana santhi ustad bhai veer singh when he got married he told his wife he said uh, he said he goes menu bala tang na kari main choti apni sri chhad dena yeah so he said to his wife for the english speakers ana he said don't like uh, irritate me too much ana oh a uh, mess me about too much i'm going to die young and she was a uh, like a very irritable woman she, she was you know the character and you know the that's not like a, against women and she just one of those and and uh, highly strong let's say and and uh, he died so he came to smedic he did a duty pawar was the pradhan at the time pawar ne odi mehnat ki thi ki tu reh hor sar ana tera visa bada dunge he was quite close to me and i even though we only met a few times and and he was like he was one of those things you'd see was always in charge of the club always smiling always laughing never any sort of 
And when he dies, he, he dies in a car accident. And Bible Leap Singh's mother, Anna Martha, was in the car with him. Yeah. And she said, she said, I remember, she said, he's sitting in the front of the car. And it was a school bus. And he sees the bus and he says, Bus, 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 he knew he was going to die. He knew the bus was going to take his death. He knew the bus was going to take his death. He knew the bus was going to take his death. मरने ते ही पाइए पूरे परमानंद था ना हम सानू की पतोदी बसता था ना but the thing is he was like yeah boys let boss is here I'm gonna die माता नहीं लाता जब तक नहीं ठीक होती है ना ये लांग मार दिया जाए ना so it's like that's the difference those things and these things they knew their destiny yeah. and for them it's just a game they're just playing it out and in terms of like even laughing and joking for them this is what they came to do उन अंदर तो कोई कमी कर ना है ਸੰਤਾਨ ਨਾਲ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਬੰਦਾ ਰਹਿ ਗਿਆ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਬਹਿ ਗਿਆ ਦੇ ਗੋਟ ਹੈਵ ਸਮ ਪੂਰ ਵੇ ਕਰਮ ਹੈ ਨਾ ਹੈ ਨਾ ਉਹ ਦੇਖੋ ਨੇ ਬਿਨ ਇਨ ਦਾ ਸੰਗਤ ਟੂ ਬੀ ਰਨ ਪੂਰ ਬ੍ਰਹਮ ਗਿਆਨ ਹੀ ਇਜ਼ ਆਲਸੋ ਸੂਰਮਾ ਹੈ ਨਾ ਸੋ ਦੇ ਦੇ ਹੈਵ ਟੂ ਹੈਵ ਸਮ ਪੂਰ ਵੇ ਕਰਮ ਐਨੀ ਆਈ ਬਟ ਇਨ ਟਰਮਸ ਆਫ ਅਸ ਡਿਵੈਲਪਿੰਗ ਦੈਟ ਸਪਿਰਿਟ ਵੀ ਹੈਵ ਟੂ ਲੁੱਕ ਐਟ ਦੇ ਨਾਮ ਅਭਿਆਸ ਦੇ ਜੀਵਨ ਐਂਡ ਵਾਟ ਦੇ ਲਿਵਡ ਹੈ ਨਾ ਦੀਸ ਥਿੰਗਸ ਹਰ ਦੀ ਅਭਿਆਸ ਹਰ ਦੇ ਜੀਵਨ ਸੋ ਯੂ ਲੁੱਕ ਐਟ ਪਾਈ ਦਲਬੀਰ ਸਿੰਘ ਅਭਿਆਸ ਯੂ ਸ਼ੁਡ ਸਟੈਂਡ ਇਨ ਦਿਸ ਰੋਵਰ ਮੱਛੀਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਖਾਣ ਲੱਗ ਪੰਦੀਆਂ ਸੀਗੀਆਂ ਉਹਨੂੰ ਸੁੱਧ ਬੋਲ ਦੇ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੁੰਦੀ ਸੀਗੀ ਹੀ ਨੇਵਰ ਨਿਊ ਵਾਸ ਗੋਇੰਗ ਔਨ ਹਨਾ ਸੋ ਥੀਸ ਗਾਇਸ ਲਿਵਡ ਥੈਟ ਜੀਵਨ ਹਨਾ ਲਾਈ ਵੀ ਗੋਨ ਥ੍ਰੇ ਪੈਰੇ ਦੀ ਸੇਵਾ ਐਂਡ ਵੀ ਸਲੀਪ ਦਿ ਰੈਸਟ ਆਫ ਦ ਡੇ ਹਨਾ ਥ੍ਰੇ ਪੈਰੇ ਦੀ ਸੇਵਾਸ ਵੈਨ ਯੂ ਡੂ ਦਰਬਾਰ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਇਸ਼ਨਾਨ ਅਬਾਉਟ 12 ਹਾਫ ਟੋਲਡ ਵੈਨ ਨੋ ਦ ਰੁਤ ਹਨਾ ਸੋ ਥੀਸ ਥਿੰਗਸ ਟੂ ਡੂ ਥੈਟ ਇਨ ਦ ਮਾਰਨਿੰਗ ਥੈਨ ਡੂ ਦ ਨਿਤਨੇ ਮੋਰ ਡੇ ਐਂਡ ਥੈਨ ਕੈਰੀ ਔਨ ਔਰ ਸੋ ਈਵਨ ਸੰਤ ਨਾਲ ਸਿੰਘ ਯੈ ਸੰਤ ਨਾਲ ਸਿੰਘ ਜਬ ਆਸ ਕਿੰਨਾ ਸਿਗਾ ਹਨਾ ਇਸ ਲਾਈਕ ਯੂ ਕੈਨ ਸੈ 80 ਜਪ ਸੈਵਸ 100 ਜਪ ਸੈਵਸ ਵਾਟ ਐਵਰ ਇਟ ਵਾਸ ਬਟ ਦੈਟ ਵਾਸ ਪ੍ਰਾਇਰ ਟੂ ਹਿਮ ਬਿਕਮਿੰਗ ਦ ਜਥਾਦਾਰ ਸੋ ਆਲ ਦ ਕਮਾਈ ਦੈਟ ਦੇ ਡੀਡ ਈਵਨ ਇਨ ਦ ਰਗੰਦੀ ਗੈਟਿੰਗ ਕਿਲਡ ਸੰਤ ਨਾਲ ਸਿੰਘ ਨੇ ਸਵਾ ਸਵਾ ਲੱਖ ਜਪਤੀ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਦੇ ਪਾਠ ਲਾਇਓ ਸੀਗੇ ਦੋ ਤਿੰਨ ਸਿੰਘਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਇੰਦਰਾ ਗਾਂਧੀ ਨੂੰ ਮਾਰਨ ਦੇ ਉਹ ਉਹਦੀ ਵੀ ਕਮਾਈ ਐਨੀ ਸੀਗੀ ਸੋ ਇਹ ਐਂਟ ਜਸਟ ਲਾਈਕ ਸਤਵੰਤ ਸਿੰਘ ਬਿਆਨ ਸਿੰਘ ਗਿਵ ਦ ਗੋਲੀ ਥੇਰ ਇਸ ਅ ਲੋਟ ਆਫ ਅਦਰ ਸਟਫ ਗੋਸ ਔਨ ਬਿਹਾਈਂਡ ਥੀਸ ਥਿੰਗਸ ਐਨਾ ਈਵਨ ਰੀਸੈਂਟਲੀ ਐਨਾ ਪੀਪਲ ਹੂ ਹੈਵ ਡਾਈਡ ਥੇਰ ਇਸ ਅ ਲੋਟ ਆਫ ਅਬਿਆਸ ਹੈਸ ਬੀਨ ਡਨ ਟੂ ਕਿਲ ਸਮ ਪੀਪਲ ਐਨਾ ਵੀ ਕਾਨਟ ਟਾਕ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਦਾ ਓਪਨਲੀ ਇਨ ਟਰਮਸ ਆਫ ਦ ਓਪਨ ਫੋਰਮ ਬਟ ਥ ਥਿੰਗ ਇਸ ਥੈਟ ਹੈਪਨਸ ਐਨਾ ਬਟ ਥ ਥਿੰਗ ਇਸ ਥੀਸ ਥਿੰਗਸ ਥੇ ਸਪਿਰਿਟ ਇਸ ਨੇਵਰ ਇਟਸ ਸਮ ਐਨਾ ਥੇ ਹੈਵ ਅ ਸਟਿਲ ਸਟਿਲਨੈਸ ਇਨ ਥੈਮ ਸੋ ਥੇ ਨੇਵਰ ਗੈਟ ਇਮੋਸ਼ਨਲ ਯਾ so for them because they've done the abhyas they've stole their mind so they for them the indian army's come so what for them the devta can could come down they beat the devta or no ki yana angels can come they beat them mm-hmm. to them it's nothing but the thing is the other side of it is if you think of darbar sahib i mean here in sakhiya in spiritual talk hana darbar sahib is more blessed than such kind mm. in a physical space upstairs because darbar sahib is gets you to beyond such kind it gets you brahmgyan doesn't it on earth Yeah. The one upstairs, you either got access code or you ain't in it. You either kicked out the door. Mm-hmm. This one you can go to, and you can make yourself enter that one. Mm-hmm. So this one's more blessed. Mm-hmm. So then, who can be the gods of this one? उत्ते भी ओही लड़ोगे जना ने कमाई की थी या उधर रब ने तो उन्हन ने बैठा लाने का जना ने उधे पास जना मदान देख के आना. So it's like they to, to be the gods in that situation. They all have to have maha kamai, and they they can't have just been there. It's not like oh, you just went to the bar and seven ended up there. and some of the things obviously did and under the karma the sigge but generally the ones who all knew they all knew six months behind that this is going to happen now this is going to evolve this is situations going to happen so even sundu's wedding i think there's four weddings on that day wow yeah so this four jodinya who got anandkaraj on the same day so when you look at the photos i think they got to sit down in a row <laughs> and then they followed each other around the the lama hmm. so there's actually four just kind of going off topic by links though you talked about this idea of being I'm um, doing a bias and kamai um why is that so important because i remember a few years ago you did a talk at park avenue um and you was talking about how those guru six there on that day you know they weren't enwrapped in like the banjiv card you know they weren't like they weren't you know like grow the these kind of things right it was something at a much higher level
well, we've got to realize on a spiritual level, it's one and nine and 84 as numbers that makes up 1984. Na? Ek Meshir. Tera shuru honda na. So we've got to get back to the one Prashmeshir. How do we do that? Oda no japke. The hmm. number nine, no japke. Yasi Ek Parmeshir, the no japunge, the Sada Kyoga, Sada Chirasi Kati Jogi. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so the 84 will go. So that's our whole mission. For the Sangs who fought, only the Chirasi Pala Kati Yosi, only the Chakari Nisiga, only the Namkamai Sadale Kiti. Yeah, so they didn't need to do that, a lot of these guys, because right? they were super. They were basically what happens is when world history is going to be made, certain peoples and certain souls are sent back to the earth mm. to recreate history. Around Guru Sahib's and other times of period as well. They, these Sikhs are sent, Anna, or even great souls to make Indian history, you could say, like the Mahabharata and people like the Pandavas. Anna. And so these people come again and again, Anna, and they create world history, but they've already done that. That Nam Japana, they've done that. They wanted the Jirasi Kattiaga. I see they go to the Rojakhande, Amrath Villa, Jage, and they phone Bandreya. You know what I mean? We do, you know, we do our Japanese say right, did we do it wrong? But if you do that, if you sort out your spirituality first, Everything else is like, uh, you, it's like you're going surfing <laughs> and surfing the waves of the world. Nothing affects you ever again. doesn't matter if you get married. doesn't matter if you have 15 kids. doesn't matter if you get in complete poverty. doesn't matter if the whole of the government gets against, against you and your friends have been lied and you've been chased around the world. doesn't matter what happens to you because your Namakumai makes you perfected inside. And once you're perfected inside, it's just like the Maya can't touch you then because you got your face towards the Guru at all times. Your face is not going anywhere. It doesn't matter. It's like, it doesn't make a difference. Mm-hmm. So that's the difference of the Abhyas. The Abhyas is to get us there. So those sayings, they'd already done that. But that 1984, even as a, as a, a lettering, gives us a spiritual meaning as well. To like, And we miss that. Mm. So our whole Sikhi starts from that. It doesn't start from the warrior. It starts from the Harmandar Sahib. Fear Kaal Taak Sahib Deh Jaida. But Kaal Taak Sahib Deh Bae Kevi Harmandar Sahib Deh Darshan Deh. Ke Tu Galta Na Karaji Kaam. Yeah. So and that's where we, a lot of people went wrong in the movement and stuff as well because they didn't keep the oneness of the Bar Sahib at the forefront, Anna. Mm. And one thing you just mentioned, I remember I came into Sikhi because of 1984, and again, um, very amazed at. The, that section of our history and seeing the same episodes from three, four hundred years ago being documented and it proved as evidence in a way. But I think, again, as most youngsters do come in hothead, want to take over Punjab and all the rest of it. And just like you mentioned, I think one thing that really helped to settle me uh, and also gave me a lot of haunts, a lot of inspiration was the idea that Guru Sahib sends the souls that are required when they're required. And um, I know, I think it's Gani Balbi singing the Katha. I know it's mentioned quite a lot. Even the Panji Piyari were. Bhagats in their previous yeah. lives and, and you hear of Vardai Mahapur, Kisanti Gurbachan Singh Ji, Shahidi Sarovar and I think sometimes that's quite uh, reassuring to know that when these big situations come so we think we can do all we can and we should but the truth of the matter is Guru Sahib will send their generals where they need it mm. I remember that being very a re- very reassuring thing for me um, just thought I'd mention it because you touched upon it as well and just by some you're speaking about uh, Harmandar Sahib and uh, all that the Haas so what's it like for you going to Sri Harmandir Sahib? Because I'm sure you've been many times in the past, um, close to 984, I'm just guessing. And now maybe you gone, you've you been in India recently. What does it feel like going there and seeing the change of what the Rabaz have used to be like, all the buildings, all the Galia, now it's like just, it's so different now. So what is that for you? And all the Tahas that has been there from Jirasi and so on. So the first time I went there after the attack was in 88. Hmm. And when we went in 88, there was three clear uh, bullet marks on the gold of the front panels of Darbar Sahib. I mean, one big one and then two others, Anna. So prior to that, obviously, there were bullet holes throughout the whole of the Prakarma and everywhere. So Akal Tak Sahib had been tired and then got rebuilt and whatever. Anna. And then it was re- getting rebuilt again in 88 when I went. So they destroyed a lot of it. But obviously, in 88, as a child, it was like really scary because I was 10 years old and Literally, it was like a fight to go. Mm. I remember I went the one fighting to go because we was like, you know, Punjab, we were like on a holiday for two months to Punjab because that's the sort of things we used to do back in those days. Because mm. you'd go for five years and you wouldn't go again. Anna. And uh, I remember hating it in the bend. So going to the Dwarf but my mama was really scared for us to go to the Dwarf Sahib because the Sangarish was still on. Mm. Even though obviously everyone's families know some karku somewhere locally. Yeah. So Deepa here and I was local to us and stuff. Anna. But... Uh, 
we went. It was like, you, are you going to get stopped at a checkpoint? And I remember the army being, or the police or the CRPF on the entrances. So you just have to, ha- where the Langar side is, you just have to go through a checkpoint mm. to get in and out. So that existed in 88. And then after that, I think I go, I can't remember the, after 88 when I go, then I, I start going after Taika in 94. And I remember I used to go with my nanny on missions. So it used to be just me and her in it, <laughs> like on buses and whatever. And we used to go around Punjab and she used to be scared like if I disappeared for five minutes, like, where's he gone? <laughs> or I might be gone for an hour and she'd be threatening in the room. Hannah. So we started doing that, just me and her, because she used to live in Punjab at the time. She lives in New York now. And, uh, but then you see the, like, uh, the change in the people, the fear factor left a bit in the Punjabis. And then you saw what the state was doing in terms of the Badal Sarkars that came in and stuff. And changing the suppression of the Sikhs to control the Sikh psyche. So the promotion of alcohol. Yeah. Well, Punjab is now saturated with off licenses. Now they've passed a law recently in the last few days to say you can sell alcohol in any shop in Punjab. Don't it doesn't have license. to be a ticker. It yeah, doesn't have yeah. to be an off license now. So they, that's going to increase it more. So it's like, why is Punjab flooded with alcohol? And uh, obviously the Rabar Sahib is like the sanctity around it. But then what we saw was, we saw the demolition of the boundary. Because in the past, if you look at the old photos, behind the Kalpak Sahib, there's buildings. Around the other sides as well, there used to be secret passages or other passages or other walkways. And what they did is they whitewashed the whole of the complex to make a perimeter, brought all the buildings around, like CPO, them like compulsory purchase orders as a sarkar. And then they now organized and designed the gardens around the Bar Sahib in a way that if they ever have to attack again, they can bring tanks in and other things as an army to attack without getting taking too many losses. Wow. So it's like strategically now planned. And then the front part where they've now uh, made it all a promenade. Yeah. That's actually owned by the government. Some of that is. Mm. That's what people don't realize. So there's underneath there, they've got basements and they've got a car park. But it's like they could have a control room in there. And it's all very open, as you mentioned, right? Yeah. Like but that's actually can... Sarkari Jagat at the front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's actually owned by the government as well. So when you see these things and you're like, whoa, and then everything's been destroyed, someone goes there today. The Shahid the Yadagad is there in a corner. Only if you know about it. Only if you know about it. Yeah. But then there's not a single photo. Yeah. On in the museum, you've got a list of about 73 or 74 things who actually fought and got Shahid. Mm. But you only get to that list if you walk through the whole of the museum and get to the last part and then see a list of names. Even the videos we watched the videos recently you talked about like Masarangar's. The, I mean, the museum is quite cool. The cinematographics and everything yeah. are really good. But then the only thing missing is that, and for obvious reasons, I guess. Yeah, because they did, uh, Baba Tumma did get this, I uh, don't something. I can't remember what the guy's name was. Uh, is he sec- press secretary? What a certain point time. But that guy published a list of the names of everyone who died in 84 in the attack. So we've now got a list, which we've done with Tribute 84. I don't have tribute of put it up, but we've done a list, which is about, I think we're up to about 600 names with the band and everything else. So we've done that. But then again, it's like, really, there needs to be like a, some sort of like open call yeah. to say everyone who died or didn't return home, if your names are not here and you've got family members, tell us who they are. So there needs to be some sort of website with this on. And that includes the Indian Army. Because otherwise, we're never going to know the truth, are we? There's an, it's like, it's not a, mm. like a truth consensus, isn't it? And the BJP can do it because they can say Congress Nikita, <laughs> but the thing is that needs to happen because really like 40 years nearly on now, we still don't know basic data of the real numbers. They can say like they had the Indian government white paper post the attack, but that isn't factual. We all know that the numbers are not real because also in there, when they put the casualties in there, they put it as civilians stroke terrorists. So they're openly admitting we just killed everyone. Sangat were killed, yeah. Yeah, we don't know who they were. They didn't marte, marte. Do you get it? And then even in the Bar Sahib, in the Ram, Guru Ram Das Sarah, they kill about 80 to 200 people in one shooting towards the end of the attack. So it's like there was mass killing that went on, but we don't really know. And obviously, our families die and p- members pass away 40 years on. We're never going to know if, unless someone does it now. So that's our struggle, right? And I remember going to Japan in 2019 and looking at how they've symboled their history. And it's really inspiring, but also it got me quite ducky to think that we haven't been able to do this. And I think for obvious reasons, because there's a big agenda for us not to do it. 
And I was talking to my wife actually about even Auschwitz, um, where obviously the Nazis persecuted the Germans. And even today, they've got a lot of memorabilia that really helps to provide the story. I think there's a glass, a glass cabinet where all the shoes of the children that were massacred have been placed underneath. So it really brings it home. And as you've mentioned, we're kind of like an uphill struggle now where we're trying to um, maintain as much of that story as we can. But obviously the state and the agencies are against us. Yeah. Um, another question I had taking it a slightly different way is the battle that we face now, you mentioned you wrote these books in order to be able for people to be able to source these things and also have some prominence when discussing 1984. Recently, we've had quite a few interesting characters. We've had people that are sitting on chairs in universities. We've got journalists like Sonny Hundel. Um, we've got people like Dr. Rami Ranger who are holding very prominent positions within the, within the English establishment that are talking about these issues. And recently we had the Bloom Report as well, in which from my reading, the two main people quoted was Sonny Hundle and Dr. Jagbir Jyoti Johar from the University yeah. of Birmingham, who are controversial in themselves. Yeah. How do we now fight back against, um, I guess, the political battle that's taking place and also the, the academic battle? Because it seems that the power is coming from one side and at the moment we don't have a lot or we're not getting the limelight that we need in that sense. Yeah, see... Because I'm old now and I've got white hairs. You're not that old. Yeah. No, but I'm just saying, I'll never get shocked now. You yeah. Know that, you yeah, know, when yeah. the Bloom Report came out, yeah, no, 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 no. so for me, like even on Twitter and things like that, people are waiting for me to like do a statement and I, was, I can't be bothered sometimes because we're so used to it. It's become stale and old for people yeah, like me. Yeah. So it's quite hard for us, like people who've been activists for so many years, to keep coming out and say the same thing because we're like, this is nothing new. But yeah, it's the same people still doing it. Hmm. So that's the problem. There's no youth coming through who are actually doing this activism like Seek PA. Jas is always crying out for help, Anna. And there's not. So we need those. We need, look, at the end of the day, I went to university. I was a student, Anna. And Margaret Thatcher had been in the government. And as a student, I was a bit radical. And I used to say to the students at Warwick University, I said, you're all Thatcher's children. Yeah? Because she went against the miners and whatever she did, Anna. And we became like a controlled society. And uh, that's what I used to say. But then at the same time, we were still doing things as Sikhs, ourselves as students, and going up and down the country and doing our programs, whatever it was. Anna. But now I don't see that activism. Mm. So even at Brunel University, here are Brunel's in West London, but West London's got the biggest Sikh population possibly in the UK, if you put it the whole conurbation in. Anna. Yeah, but Brunel University, we had 40 people in the talk. It might look good on social media. Guessing only the Lata Tavana of the Bibi who did the talk. Mm. But the thing is, really, out of the 40 people in the room, I knew 25. <laughs> and 15 were my friends and family who came. And there was one guy who traveled from Manchester to hear me speak. So it's like, what is going on here? Do you know what I mean? And I can understand like me not being an attraction for a talk. I don't mind that. But there's like... This, that talk that we did at Brunel University after that woman like said something last thing's a terrorist and whatever and compared Made in Karen Parallel to the Japanese uh, leader, whoever it was, Anna, the religious doomsday guy, Anna. Yeah. The thing was, for me, the Amrit Bal stuff was going on. So there's all this furor on social media. So we've got a talk which is relevant, topical, timely, yet people still can't come out. So Sadi Jajiba, Sadi Jameer, Kitege. People like uh, Jogi Jotol, whoever, Sonny Hundo, Rami Ranger, they're always going to exist. They've always existed. But if we don't have the Sikhs countering that, then that's where we will fail. And, what, and that's, that's the scary thing. But even with the Bloom Report, to be fair, the sources that he quoted got rubbished because they'd actually, the sources that he quoted had already been pulled. Hmm. Yeah. So the sources were actually wrong as well. Then he also quoted Wikipedia. Yeah, that's what that is. Yeah, I mean, you chat GBT, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? You're going to do Wikipedia, right? Yeah. And what you mentioned is quite interesting. You have Bayam Reef Singh, DBB of Gargor, who were huge forces in their own right because they they managed to organize the students. And I've been through university societies. You've been involved with them for many, many years. And it's sad to say, but it seems like Sikh societies in the UK have been reduced to longer on campuses and a monthly Keetan demand, which is great. I'm not knocking yeah, that. Yeah. But it seems as if like if you go in and you're doing those things, like that's what we've lowered our standards to. Has that always been the case? And how do we get back to a position where if the next 1984 or the next big thing happens within the UK, 
students, Sikh societies, and knowledge one generally are in a situation where they can mobilize. What's missing, yeah. and how do we get back to uh, a polit politically savvy level? Yeah, you have to with the Sikh students is one or two things. You either have the Kamaya by Amrik Singh, hmm. which ninety nine point nine percent are never gonna have. Yeah. So they can't make a declaration to all students be Amritari, yeah. Sikh student bodies, Anna. So that's gonna happen. So you do the opposite, which is the opposite extreme, which is what we did. We got Monne Monia to be the presidents of the Sikh societies, and we hid behind them and ran the society. Because <laughs> what you want a PR plan? You want to get through the people who cut their hair into the Sikh society, get them into the room, and then shake them and inspire them, make them the new Amritaris. And the new Amritaris are the ones who usually have the most judged about to do <laughs> stuff and be active. Mm. And the Amritaris are usually the worst people to run Sikh societies across, across the Western world. The Amritaris will run a Sikh society and start arguing with each other. <laughs> so the thing is, if you can do that and get those people to run the societies, that's what we did back in our day. And we told them, if you mess about, it's work on your CV, mate, yeah? but if you mess around, we're pulling you. You ain't got a chance. Yeah, so we controlled the agenda that way, but that's how we did it. And like you're talking about like activism. I remember when I was doing my A levels, uh, I was the what was I? The general secretary of the Sikh Youth Group also, between the ages of 16 to 18. And there was a uh, a girl, hopefully she doesn't listen to this yet. Uh, <laughs> she she'd said to me she's gonna take Amrit before me, and she didn't. So we were at school together for five years, senior school. Yeah. And we we always fought like cat and mouse, and we didn't really get along, and but when I got to sixteen, I, I matured a bit and like treated a bit like a sister rather than like throwing pens at her head and whatever, Hannah. <laughs> and uh, but so she didn't. She 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 challenged me. Can I take the pella? I'm not shaking. Can I? I'm not shaking the pella. Today, I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to do anything. But then between the ages of sixteen to eighteen, I was a general secretary. Can't remember what she was in the CQ group, Hannah. And uh, she had a go at me. She said, "Look, you're running around doing your Sikh side at Wolverhampton, whatever." And you're doing all the all this over, you're gonna fail your A levels. Mm. I'll get better, better A level results now. And she was smarter than me. Yeah. So she was smarter than me. And then in my at university, in my final year, I looked at my options. I looked at what work I needed to do. And I didn't go to lectures for like 13 weeks. And one of my lecturers thought I'd uh, left. And he met me on a corridor and I said, I've had eight deaths in the family. And it was, I wasn't lying. There had been eight deaths in the family. We were like, dur, dur, the rest of them. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I just came out and said, I've had six, I've had all these deaths in the family. That someone keeps dying and I can't go to the lecture. And then Farjo Farjo, you had to go to like one or two of the seminars. Mm. But in my final year, I wasn't at uni. I was never there. And even throughout the three years, like Warwick University, Jal Sukhra, Singh Sandi Lal Singha. But he was in Imam Murtari at the time. Anna. And uh, we, we didn't, we weren't there. We were never there at uni. We were at other Sikh societies up and down the country. And the, what you're saying about the Keith and the Bars, where the Sikh sites have fallen down, mm. and you until you take the students to Guru Kar, because we knew through our Prachar, because our Prachar was not able to do it. We knew that the Maharaj is not able to do it. The Maharaj is not able to do it. It's like, you know, if I get a gun and I put a bullet in it, in the Darbar, it's not going to be a gun. When I do it in the Sikh site, it's the same goalie, but I'm throwing it with my hand. Mm. It wouldn't even scratch your nose, Sukhdeep Singh, you know what I mean? From here, yeah? yeah? You'd catch it with your hand, but that's the difference, right? Because Maharaj is the Maha Shakti, the Maha Kalyan, right? But then the Langar on campus, right? We've turned it into, we just, all our Sikhi Prajaris, make yourselves feel good, pat yourselves on the back. It doesn't matter. Jinnah mm. Marji biyad bhi hoi Langar di. Jinnah Marji sitna pewe baaj. That's what all the Langar on the campuses is telling me. They throw so much Langar away, it's wasted, yeah? It's like, what's the point of this? Like, we just, we're just maha feeders of the world. And mm. so it's not, we, we don't do our seva to get reciprocation, because right? that's not what our arms about. But at the same time, we're not helping the Sikhs on the ground in Punjab mm. who need the help. And the students are coming to the UK. We need to stop them coming. So every time I go to India, I try to stop people coming. Mm. Yeah, that's what I do every time. Why? Yeah. Because they're wasting money to come here for a future which doesn't exist. Yeah. I know millionaires in India as well. I know things. But here, they, like, so one of the people said to me, he said, Paji, I'm going to England. Jana. And I said, Kidna, he goes, Sola Lak. The Miri Galhoya, Ajantanal. So £16,000 for a six month visitor visa to the UK. And I said to him, I said, I can give you a visitor visa free from home, the Radari. Why are you paying £16,000? He said, I'm going to go illegal and then just live there and work. 
I said, you know, the £16,000 you're going to spend, you could eat the biage for three years in India off that. You could eat the interest. But then I went and spoke to like a money exchange guy who knows a friend of mine as well. And I said to him, I go, Paji, I'm not going to give you this. He goes, I said, 16 lakhs cheap. I said, people are paying 20, 25. I said, so how do they do it? He said, they pay someone like you from outside, £4,000 to make the sponsorship from the yeah. UK. Then the agent makes fake paperwork of the uh, bank statements yeah. and whatever, the employment, and then they get the visa and they're on their way. And it's our own people robbing our own people. So now currently in the UK, there's a lot of people getting work permits on care homes and stuff yeah, or yeah. care workers. And they're paying £21,000 to get a three-year visa on a work permit. And they're already here. And then they've paid money to get here. Then they're paying the care home or the care company twenty-one grand, which they won't make back yeah. for another two years. So, But it's the desperation yeah, because they don't see no future mm-hmm. in Punjab or in India. So it's like, what can you do to these people? But we're not helping We need to go back home and help those people. Mm. And we, if we don't do that, then there's no future unless we're going to actually mass migrate back to Punjab, which I don't see most people doing. Anna. No, indeed. And just the idea of help. Um, we spoke a lot about Sanjay Nair Singh Ji and these other topics. Um, but another topic that you speak a lot about is Sanjay Nair Singh Ji. And um, what was their role and the importance of them? And what help did they provide during that period of time as well, Ji? And just before that, A lot of people might know who Sanjay Nair Singh Ji is. If you could just explain who Sanjay Baba Thakur Singh Ji was as well. So Baba Thakur Singh was part of the Tuxal from Sanjay Baba Thakur Singh's days. And he became a personal assistant, which called Anna Garvey for Sanjay Baba Thakur Singh. So he used to have to basically be up before them, go to sleep after them and like be uh, like serving them what, whatever needs they needed Anna, at all times. So after Sanjay Baba Thakur Singh passes away, Sanjay Baba Thakur Singh becomes the Mukhi of the Tuxal. Uh, Sanjay Gani Mohan Singh becomes the Prabhandaka at Pindra. But... Uh, so uh, Baba Thakur Singh goes with Sant Kartar Singh to Mehta when they make the Godra there and uh, in the Jatha it was known that Sant Kartar Singh respected Baba Thakur Singh a lot and Sant Kartar Singh said in speeches that if I anything happens to my body because obviously they went against Indira Gandhi in the emergency so they knew it was a bit risky mm-hmm. so if anything happens to my body then Baba Thakur Singh's body is to appoint the next leader or they are the leader yeah. so it's, it's their job so Baba Thakur Singh is the one who appoints Sant Janal Singh after Sant Kartar Singh passes away. And then during Sant Janal Singh's days, obviously Sant Janal Singh used to stand up if Babaji walked into the room, say it the Rabbiya, so this is God walking and talking. So that was the level of respect for Baba Thakur Singh. And Babaji was like the mother of the Duxal. Mm-hmm. So people would go to Babaji for like clothes and things like that and they'd help them out. And uh, even when I used to go from, I went from the UK once on behalf of Babaji, I was going back to India, Babaji gave me things to take to Metta. And I remember Sathbir Singh at the Dehrana and... Uh, There was some bibiyan outside Sathbir Singh's room. So Sathbir Singh was the other day at the day at the time. He lives in Tracy now in California. No? And uh, I said to Sathbir Singh, I said, uh, oh, bibiyan come on here. So they're just like hanging around outside the room. Like, See, I need bibiyan, like mother's age. No? And he said, it's sheed, but I'm around the bibiyan. Until we give them money, they're not going to leave. So like you see that in front of your eyes. No? And then like after Babaji passed away, There was a lot of Nindya, a lot of people slandering Babaji, saying, what did you do for the Sangarsh? What did you do for Sheed Pravars? And then I remember Carl Said did like Seva for Sheed Pravars for like a year or two. And even Carl Said Seva Das were very critical of Babaji while they were alive. And then they realized, because hmm. every Pravar they went to said, our money came from Baba Thakur Singh. Our support came from Babaji. So even like Satwan Singh's, uh, Beyond Singh's kids, they didn't get no support from their own family as Babaji. Even by Amrik Singh's family, we can't talk openly on camera in terms of family issues, yeah. but their support was Babaji and it wasn't no one else. So there's a lot of, uh, one, looking after the Sidh Pravars, but then also advising the Karku. So I remember Diljit Singh Bittu, who was obviously now openly talking and stuff. And, uh, when Babaji passed away in Sheikh Shah, that was the magazine that they used to do, Bittu's lot. Bittu said, Ke Babaji di den Karku waaj kisnu pata nahi lagana. Because he was so gupt. So Babaji advised them, told them things to do, but sometimes they didn't listen. Babaji did send people on missions to kill people as well. And they still give like future buttons to people as all well, things to do. And what was going to evolve in the future. Anna. So I, myself and other things from the UK have got certain things and certain duties to do for the future. But it was like, Babaji was like, uh, you know, like you have a godfather <laughs> who lives through generations. Mm. So they lived through Sant Gurbachan Singh's days, Sant Kartal Singh, Sant Jandal Singh, then their own period, post-84. Yeah. For 20 years, Anna. So it's like a very uh, hard period, Anna. And I remember the crit- criticism used to be, that Mukhi Taksal da uh, Pracharak hona chaitna, Babaji bol deni. So Babaji used to speak very fast. 
and on the mic they just say for that they wouldn't actually they didn't like to speak they'd get the kathavaj can i remember those kathavaj the katha that they did in those days in from baba, baba ji used to be different the katha would be banging then yeah <laughs> but afterwards like now wo katha ono ko hundi ni wo ras ni bajda mahapur ke jo hana si if we got a spiritual person around us that aura and whatever we do around that person hana will be completely different jenne grani de thalya si kos kare hana it's completely different hana so that's what the prabhav was of baba ji but then after baba ji passes away it was like a is like a avalanche of sick issues which we couldn't believe because obviously baba ji was the head of the uh, sant samaj hana uh, and uh, we couldn't believe like dasam grant ta virod and other things just overnight started mm. and then we realized like kinne cheeza thammiya singe baba ji like stopped these things happening but then overnight all these sikh issues which had been held down by brute force of spirituality and then just became an issue like the nanak shai calendar hana and it's not a bad thing to have a calendar but it's like we just made a split over a new thing mm. yeah so it's like we already got splits over meat over ragmal and other things and we just added another one <laughs> over the calendar now so we just made another split which we didn't need but the thing is it's like that's what they then was and but in terms of the karkuvad they sent people on missions and stopped people as well who's got me wasn't so it was a bit of both yeah and then in terms of something lasting being alive or not it doesn't make a difference to people like me because sukhan jinda still did missions they believe something lasting was alive that doesn't make a difference and in terms of the sangarsh and people who say it does jinna ne karna se wo karke chal gaye jinna nahi karna woh ne aaj bhi nahi karna it doesn't make a difference and those bachan don't so it doesn't matter if something lasting comes back for me in the same body or a different body i believe they will come back and that's my relationship with baba ji and but otherwise it's like we it's very easy to criticize someone and who did so much for the calm mm. but when we can't do anything and i will challenge anyone on baba thakur saying just do just listen to part for 24 hours mm. non stop because mm. that's one day baba thakur saying and right. even lambe pe and i is like never stopped and the job never stopped so it's like in india when we used to go we went once me sakrat singh and bahardeep singh we went to bombay i met baba ji and then we saw it and it's five garways <laughs> five jawan munde sare ham jande se ke 24 ghante ch mm. ek baba budda sadda you know what i mean it's like it's five young feel healthy lads 17 18 19 years old can't can't save one guy who's is like 70 80 we were in india um, in april and yani charanji singh from yeah yeah, Chandra, yeah yeah we were speaking to them and they were telling us about stories about baba ji and how they used to go from mehta to the darbar sahib every morning fast yeah. diwar and just yeah. like things were asking them baba ji sanu sol unde sanu sol unde and it's just like they were immune to all of this stuff so when you're talking about these things you see it clearly that baba ji had a immense amount of kamai and i guess that's the reason they were the power behind a lot of these good things that people don't see at the forefront right and yeah just, the thing is what we don't realize anna the same sadhus in the world who sit in a cave yeah and they just send that energy from the cave yeah because they kamai so much and sometimes we don't know what's going on and like even baba ji sanu pata hi nahi kere sade kam karm siddhe kite ha na we have no idea because it was so gop everything was just gop mm. we don't know and just again off topic a little bit your relationship with baba ji just in like a few words how would you explain baba ji for somebody who's never had the opportunity to be blessed to sit in their sangat is like i said you sit around guru granth sahib 24 hours mm. and don't leave and then tell me what your experience is ana yeah and guru granth sahib be more powerful than baba ji that's the truth ana mm. but it's like can you do that and that's every day about baba thakur saying or just even sit at home for kirtan kathan all day and don't do anything else and go for a walk while you're doing it. do what you want but you can't listen to anything else or do anything else and then you'll get an experience of this is what baba thakur singh was about ana amapur don't go anywhere so when we do barsi and stuff ana people come with proper sharda ana they get darshan of baba ji still today Right. in the supne after the barsi and stuff like that sade wange na donde ni ana jere purane ana but the thing is so the amapur is uh, even their spiritual soul lives for like thousands of years ana guru sahib is, is more ana so they still do rakhi of the people who believe in them afterwards as well ana do you have any um personal updesh that baba ji gave to you in terms of that you think the pant could um take a lot away from like just one thing that pops in your mind of a conversation or something that they've said that you know sticks out No not really because what what people don't realize na baba ji bachan karde nahi hunde se they don't speak is spoken to yeah and we did speak to him but those those were all personal things and so i can't i can't give like a, but their bachan was basically 
if you if you're not kept your case keep your case if you're not amritari become amritari and anything else bani paro mm-hmm. to do more naam japna so like uh, in terms of like the prabhav the my brother's brother in law na uh, lada he was he was a monna khanda pinda saga thoda mota shayad na and uh, on the hiding from us when he did it, huh? <laughs> but he he did darshan baba ji and after that wala panj bani den itne nikadi rutya he died huh, in glasgow huh, motorcycle accident but the thing is from that day his nickname never broke mm. so that's the prabhav of sadhu huh? and but anything the baba ji said came true so if you can get them to talk and say something you know you're you know you're you know what I mean you got you got something Anna. so if you can get them to talk or say something then you're done Anna. Mm. so that's what that's partially my regret sometimes that certain things I didn't ask for Anna. and they would have given Anna. but it's it's more about like your own personal kamai Anna. you need to do your own personal kamai and that's what people don't realize Anna. and that relationship with Sir Mahapur Kose and Gur Six that's our time that wasn't anyone else's Anna. Mm-hmm. I'm hoping people like you know you look back and people think golden age Anna. nah people came in the first year to babaji after that down 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 babaji used to just chill at the house although i see on this court to go and dance singa you know this time sangat so no no one really stop people stop coming because they didn't want like you go to a sadhu sant you want him to give you a bachan you want to give you yeah, something exciting and this baba you go in there you got to list to nishan singh finish sukun sahib first for an hour yeah bella hum jana thak jana you know what i mean and then you like you got then you got to get your wedding quickly in it to get a bachan so he's like a lot of people like the spirit the political bande who were close to our buddy fair to be fair about buddy stop the job whatever speak to him because you know okay but but he's like so he's like for us it was just for us it was more like it was just a direct inspiration and i've been around this person and who was like a grandfather to us to be fair and mm-hmm. we we never he's like you know a confidence tell us he say get jawan we but like we so had the feeling like we could take the world on we baba ji jira marji aa jave ਜਿਹੜਾ ਮਰਜੀ ਜਥੇ ਬੰਦੀ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਮਰਜੀ ਸਰਕਾਰ ਆਵੇ ਮਾਬਾ ਜੀ ਸਾਡੇ ਨਾਲ ਐਸ ਲਾਈਕ ਅ 5 ਫੁੱਟ 3 ਬਾਬਾ ਬਜੁਰਗ ਨੇ ਪਰ ਦਾ ਦਾਸ ਦਾ ਪ੍ਰਭਾਵ ਹਨ ਆ ਬਾਬਾ ਜੀ ਪਤਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਇਵਨ ਇਨ ਲੀਡਸ ਵਨਸ ਹਨ ਸਮ ਆਫ ਦ ਸੈਂਗਸ ਲਾਈਕ ਜਵਾਨੀ ਚ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਨਾ ਕਿ ਅਸੀਂ ਅਸੀਂ ਖਰ ਕੂਆ ਅਸੀਂ ਕੰਮ ਕਰੂਗੇ ਆ ਸਮ ਆਫ ਦੀ ਸੈਂਗਸ ਦੇ ਕੈਨ ਦੇ ਕੈਨ ਫਾਈਟ 10 ਪੀਪਲ ਵਨ ਵਨ ਗਾਇ ਆਰ ਹੂ ਵਾਸ ਦੇ ਐਟ ਦ ਸੈਂਗਸ ਹੀ ਕੈਨ ਟੇਕ ਔਨ 10 ਮੈਨਸ ਈਜ਼ਲੀ ਆ ਐਮ ਨਾਟ ਆਮ ਨਾਟ ਐਗਜੈਜਰੇਟਿੰਗ ਆਮ ਬੀਇੰਗ ਸੀਰੀਅਸ ਹੀ ਯਾ ਹੀ ਕੈਨ ਟੇਕ ਔਨ 10 ਪੀਪਲ ਇਨ ਅ ਫਾਈਟ ਈਜ਼ਲੀ ਯਾ ਐਂਡ ਸੋ ਬਾਬਾ ਜੀ ਨੇ ਉਹਦੀ ਉਹਦੀ ਤਾਂ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਹੋਰ ਨਾਲ ਹੋ ਗਏ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਪਾਫ ਕੱਢ ਨਹੀਂ ਸੀ ਕਹਿੰਦਾ ਕਿ ਯੂ ਥਿੰਕ ਹੀ ਕੈਨ ਡੂ ਸਮਥਿੰਗ ਸੋ ਆਟ ਸਾਈ ਸੁਖਰਾਜ ਸਿੰਘਸ ਹਾਊਸ ਹਨ ਦ ਰੋਡ ਇਜ਼ ਕੁਆਇਟ ਬਿਜ਼ੀ ਹਨ ਵੇ ਦਿਸ ਦਿਸ ਦਾ ਫੈਮਿਲੀ ਸਟੋਰੀ ਦਾ ਸੁਖਰਾਜ ਸਿੰਘਸ ਮੂਵਡ ਬਿਹਾਈਂਡ ਹਨ ਬਟ ਦ ਰੋਡ ਇਜ਼ ਕੁਆਇਟ ਬਿਜ਼ੀ ਐਂਡ ਵਾ ਬਾਬਾ ਜੀ ਡਿਡ ਕਸ ਬਾਬਾ ਜੀ ਸ਼ੁਡ ਲਾਈਕ ਗੋਇੰਗ ਔਨ ਵਾਕਸ ਬਾਬਾ ਜੀ ਸਟਾਰਟ ਵਾਕਿੰਗ ਇਨ ਦ ਮਿਡਲ ਆਫ ਦ ਰੋਡ ਬਿਜ਼ੀ ਰੋਡ ਕਾਰਸ ਆ ਕਮਿੰਗ ਸਵੇਵਿੰਗ ਟੂ ਮਿਸ ਥੈਮ ਐਂਡ ਦ ਸਿੰਗਸ ਯੈ ਸੋ ਦੇ ਮਾਈਟ ਬੀ ਔਨ ਦ ਸਾਈਡ ਬਾਬਾ ਜੀ ਮਾਈਟ ਬੀ ਇਨ ਦ ਬਿਡਲ ਸੋ ਦ ਕਾਰਸ ਨੇ ਦੇਮ ਹਨ and they're moving what was saying what's wrong with you dar de khade ro so that's just like walking in the middle of a road hana so baba ji like just scared him and like taught him a lesson like you think you can do something hana but you can't even like take an oncoming car to you let alone anything else hana so if you think it, as a comparable 84 we're talking about today it's a tank it's a goddamn tank right. mm-hmm. the only way you dislodge a tank is if you get the butt off the bottom mm-hmm. the chain yeah and if you ain't got anti tank missiles that ain't coming off and the only thing you could do for the anti tank sick missiles got she in 84 in april so did mm. yeah so it's like how like how can you even comprehend like a tank coming in and then someone telling me there's 12 tanks that are counted in the in the in the queue outside the mm. prakarma let alone inside yeah so it's like you can't comprehend the physical physical aspect of this war that these things for hana and baba ji obviously was an inspiration to them who fought so sanjana asan ke andar oh ta rab ya hmm yeah you got to mean so we were around that rab hana so but the thing is baba ji gave us a lot of gopt bachan hana so the the night to baba ji was to tell someone something that would tell you hmm so they might not tell you directly as well so that bachan would come to you in a different way hana in a roundabout way hana but even today some of the gurveys the one bachan like one of them I won't say who he is hana one of me never darshan on there and he gets advice every month ਸਾਈ ਗੁਰੂ ਅਫਮਾ ਬਾਜੀ ਐਂਡ ਦੈਨ ਦੇ ਸ਼ਹੀਦ ਪਰਵਾਰਸ ਐਸ ਵੈਲ ਦੇ ਸੇਮ ਪੀਪਲ ਇਨ ਦੇ ਸ਼ਹੀਦ ਪਰਵਾਰਸ ਹੂ ਗੈਟ ਐਡਵਾਈਸ ਫਰਮ ਦੇਅਰ ਫਾਦਰ ਸੋ ਯੂ نو ਵੀ ਸਾਈ ਲਾਈਕ ਦੇ ਗੋਟ ਸ਼ਹੀਦ ਐਂਡ
No, you couldn't. Even though they're not physically here, no? So one of the children will get darshan all the time mm. and be told what to do for the family and all that sort of stuff. So the thing is, on a spiritual level, some of it still continues, Anna, but you can't, obviously we're saying it today on this podcast, but people don't know who we're talking about. But So on a spiritual level, what it is, like, you know, on a dunyavi level, on a worldly level, we can't comprehend these things, Anna. We can't comprehend, like, on a spiritual plane. Like there's different dimensions on the earth. You can walk to the heaven. Doesn't make walk. sense to us. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. We're stuck in our science, Hana. Hmm. It's like now if I say, "Is the water here?" Yeah. Yeah. Then Mandeep Singh will say yes because he's a teacher, Hana. You know, but that the Pangeli did last night, Hana. Yeah. So there's water. Yeah, there is water here. Yeah. Someone like me would say no, there isn't, but there is. So if we got a cold bottle, a cold one, put it here. You can see the water outside, can't you? So the, it's that, Hana. Basically, we can't get the invisible bhargat in our lives. Mm-hmm. That's the whole point of your earlier questions, isn't it? Making the invisible visible in our lives by, by our spiritual eye, isn't it? Because we've done the abhyas, we've done the simran. So even in the attack, if you think of it like this on a spiritual level, Hannah, so like obviously you lot know that I've created different fictional accounts, different accounts of the attack and different ways of rep- representing the history of the attack, Hannah. Before the army guy comes in, the Seng sees him through the wall. And he's waiting for him to walk through so he can shoot him in there. And he's only got a bold rifle he's going to shoot him with. He hasn't got a machine gun. But when the army guy falls with his machine gun, he walks over, pulls his body, pulls the machine gun, strips him, and then dresses up in his <laughs> thingy, bardi. And then the army, when they come in, they're confused because, oh, other banda, other banda. It's like, then you, so do you get what I mean? So it's like it's like John Gore the Gari again. Like when Maharaj leaves the Gari, the mass killing was internal. Because mm-hmm. in the darkness, they all killed each other. They didn't know who they were killing. Yeah. And in the same way, the Indian army, when they were entering, because they were all getting slaughtered, it's like your general sending you in. And you know no one's come back. Mm-hmm. You know everyone's died who's gone in there. So what are you going to do? You're going to panic. Mm-hmm. And you might do a lot of friendly fire, Hannah. So it's like a lot of that happened as well, that which we can't document because we can't, you know, like you can you can infer these things, but you can't confirm them, can you? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you get what I mean? In this sort of, sort of situation, but the people who can confirm it is the Indian Army, mm-hmm. who won't admit. Yeah. Because they've got medals, haven't they, to say we did this, and then they'll just lie about where the soldiers died and the families won't really know. You know what I mean? So it's like it's all that, Hannah. There's a lot of spiritual. No more life and then beyond and, and realms and stuff and how these people operate and what they see. The, you talk a little bit about the the power at Harmandal Sahib. And even I remember hearing that literally commandos were sent in underwater from air, but no one could penetrate the things. And it's only really until the, the tanks came in that mm. kind of the, the weight shifted slightly. I remember hearing, um, and you might be able to shed some light on this, that when the tanks went in initially at the Astan where Baba Deep Singh Ji shied, shied the Astan, they all just kind of broke. Um, and I also remember hearing other things within Harmandar Sahib, other Kautaks, um, like in the 1900, when the British were trying to uh, auction off Harmandar Sahib, we had that, that Kautak, Hana. Are there any other things that happened around Harmandar Sahib at that time, miracles or other Kautaks that you know of that the Shangat would probably benefit from? Because I think for me, you see it on a worldly level that it's Sanjay Nair Singh with 200, 300 things fighting the army. But also what we have to remember is that there is a much bigger power at play yeah. Harmandar Sahib has been attacked yeah. many times and they actually don't know who they're going up against and we don't know who's standing behind us as well. Mm. See, one of my friends lives in Amrita Sarana and he's a, he's, a, he's a drug addict, Anna. so he falls back into his habit, comes out, Anna. and uh, I remember talking to him about the attack and he said, he said, look, this attack was against Rabadakar, Sanjakar. So this house of God is for everyone. Yeah. It's a universal shrine. It's not just a Sikh shrine. Yeah. So he said Indira Gandhi didn't just attack Sikhs. She attacked everyone yeah. by attacking the Rabar Sahib. There's another Hindu guy who's a Bajorgana. He's in his late 70s, early 80s now. Na. And I remember, I don't know how he came from conversation. And uh, we call him Master. Na, Krishan Bhagavan, the Pujari. Na. <laughs> he just started swearing at Indira Gandhi. He's like, Kutti and all. He's just, oh, I couldn't believe it. Because like, he looks like a Pandit. Na. He's lost all his hair on his head and whatever. Na. And he sings Krishan Bhagavan. They, which is that's his maragana yeah. and he just went crazy he's like how could she attack the bar sahib so when you see the judge by a hindu mm. but everyone was upset because it's you you don't attack that place it's a universal shrine Anna. in terms of the kautak like you said baba deep singh the godbare in the prakarma that tank didn't move from there and i asked sayings recently about that because he was posted there and uh, 
Jagid Singh Mahant and I said, like, more Singh's Purwani. He said, I don't really know, I can't say. Anna. But he goes, for sure, their tank didn't move before there. So, Baba Deep Singh, the Shakti, we, we don't know, Anna, but but mm. basically the tank couldn't go that way, so they had to then go the other way. Just to clarify for anyone that's listening, when we go around Harbandar Sahib and we do the Prakarma, there's like a, a small kind of step and a picture that you'll see elevated and people matar taking. That is the spot where Baba Deep Singh Ji came and, and laid their seats after fighting for, was it eight kilometers with their hand in yeah. their head, Hannah? Um, and as Bai Sahib saying, when the, the tanks arri- arrived at that place, some force just crumbled the tanks and the Indian army had to reroute their tanks around the other way. Um, yeah, sorry, just to so, so, d- when you must take that Astan, uh, the Shroni Committee have messed it up a bit now. So they've got like, they have like mats there sometimes. Sometimes they want if it's a hot day. So when you must take, in front of the Astan, there's like a there's like a circle on the floor. Mm. Yeah. Like a flower inside, let's say, you know? And that's where they say Baba Deep Singh put his head, okay. not where the Godwara is. Mm. Yeah. So that's where it's in front in the Prakarma. Oh, like in the yeah. middle. Yeah, yeah. So it's like it's right in front, Anna. So like, let's say that's the Astana, it's here, where I'm sitting, like okay, for you okay, lot here. Okay. In the, in so there. it's not under the photo, is it? Yeah, yeah, it's not under the photo, Anna. So they say that's where, and uh, what they say is if you put your hand out when you're Mata Dek there and do this, you'll get a white hair of Baba Deep Singh. A white hair? Yeah, of Baba Deep Singh. Why you? And I know two people it's had happened to. And both people questioned it and then lost the hair. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. be careful if you yeah. do it. <laughs> so it did come in the hand, Anna. So what you're supposed to do is you put your hand there and Mata Dek, Anna. So a lot of the sayings, like uh, in our circles, we won't walk over that spot. Uh, mm. It's good to know. As a Sadhgar thing, Anna, we won't. We walk around it and things like that, Anna. And uh, in the attack, what they say is, you know, so uh, again, he's passed away now, so I can say this. Gyanin uh, Jaswan Singh, he was at Sukhraj Singh's house in Leeds, Anna. Jaswan Singh, he got down the Masai, the Jathadar Singh. So from the Kaal Takht, from the Sarwat Khalsa in 86, obviously they said we abolished the Shumri Committee. So Gyanin Jaswan Singh was made the Jathadar of Damdama Sahib okay. as part of that Sarabat Khalsa decisions. So that Gyanji just one saying stayed a lot of time in Canada post the movement in uh, Toronto, in Brampton. The Kira Sadda Goddaraya, Juhot Prakash Goddaraya, he's to Katha every day. And he came over to the UK and we helped him out on his first tour that it was Yana. And he was a Sukhraj Singh, the Karisiga program, and he did Katha there. And I remember a lot of the sayings were like anti him, but when they heard his kata, they were all pro him. He's <laughs> like, you know, politically, you, see, you, you hear the views of a person. And uh, Gyanji Jaswan Singh said in the attack, he said, uh, what happened is, he said, one of the sayings from the Akal Tak Sahib can see Guru Gobind Singh. Guru. And he's saying, he's narrating and shouting to the other sayings, get Guru Gobind Singh, Hon Jalled Darbar Sahib. So he can see Guru Gobind Singh walking to Darbar Sahib. They're coming back, and then he's saying, Oh, Guru Gobind Singh is now giving out Shulle Pature to the Sengs right. who are fighting. Yeah. So he 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 said this in the Katha that day and at the house. And I was Singh the Kare. So we like, obviously, we can say it now he's passed away. Lucky Gala Kadan Jumarji can't because he got Pamardia, as he got Pia. Then the power and the Kni don't make a difference to us. But yeah, that, so things like that did happen. And if you think of it, it's like, Guru Sahib the Pratak here. Like we don't we don't believe Guru Granth Sahib and as Pratak Jyot and Guru Sahib Pratak Vart there. Mm-hmm. Especially in these sort of Karna Mehana, especially to the Sayings who are there doing the task in hand. Anna. So they are Pratak. Anna. Even like uh, when they go and kill the Narankari, they couldn't escape from there. The Sayings. The th- those three Sayings. This is Gurbachana. Who... Yeah, yeah. So Gurbachana, when they killed the Narankari, 81 is it, I think. I can't remember now. Anna. And uh, when they killed him, in the compound, they couldn't get out. So they're on the escape route and there's a door that's locked. And that door opened somehow mm. from inside and they got out. When they got to a call, when they met Santin Lal Singh, Santin Lal Singh said, Can that tick tack nickel again? They go, Yeah, we were okay. And Santin Lal Singh said, That door was locked, wasn't it? I opened the door. <laughs> right. You wouldn't have got out of there. Yeah, so even if you Google like the assassination on India today, there's like they'll say like it's one of the hardest uh, shots that someone could make. But yeah, it's like precision shot. Mm. So it's like they can't believe like even from the distance and stuff that they shot him from, Anna. But it's like so Santana Al Singh we like Edda the Vratavich you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. he's there protecting the Sangh, getting them out, even watching it from Harmandar Sahib or whatever they are, you know what I mean? So it's like we can't comprehend Anna, the level of the spirituality. Like 
I was with at the Seek to Inspire camp and I had Dr. Kriti Singh, I was with America too. And he like, he didn't like a bunch of personal bunch of about him and something else and I and having... Was that the Sadi Alda thing who was doing Prachar? Huh? Was that the Prachar who was quite a bit... Quite yeah, the old guy, yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, we were wondering who that was. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Dr. Kriti Singh, yeah. I, and I remember hearing a similar thing about by Avtar Singh Ji Brahma uh, in Malir Kotla when they were surrounded and just for context for anyone that doesn't know, Bhai Avtar Singh Ji Brahma was um, a saying of Dal Baba Bidhi Chand. Baba Bidhi Chand who used to do a lot of Uh, crazy things under the under the guidance of Guru Har Gobind Sahib Ji and often would get into hard situations do out of dash to Guru Har Gobind Sahib Ji and then miraculously come out and um i think they'd been there a bounty on their head and they'd been surrounded um by 2 3000 crpf officers around the military quarter and there were bullets just flying everywhere um and looking at where to go and i've even got the picture ups there's actually i think this finger of theirs gets shot off and at that point from being from the organization of guru har gobind sahib ji they do a similar ardash to guru har gobind sahib ji saying guru sahib ji me to see baba bidhi chand di rakhya kiti sadi vi rakhya karo just like you protected baba bidhi chand now protect me and at that point the story i read of it they just just ran out and from somehow found uh, a gap within that cordon and when they went back to see the other things the other things came running and they started like tapping him down and checking like goli ke thebat ji are you okay what's what's wrong Um, when he looked at himself, he's like, "What's wrong with you guys? I'm absolutely fine." But he only at that point realized that there were bullet holes through his dastard, through his jawline, and everything, but not one had pierced. Mm-hmm. So not just in the attack, yeah, but yeah. even the Kargula, yeah, yeah. the the freedom movement. After we hear these cortex happening, yeah. and even today we hear of these things, Anna. And I think those things are so important to remember. In what is quite a gloomy, you can see it as very gloomy situation, yeah. Anna. But also it acts as evidence that even the crazy stuff can happen to the pond. Guru Sahib will always come through. Um, I remember hearing that growing up, and it kind of gave me shivers as well. The, it, even in a spiritual context, and if you think of the '84 attack, and if you imagine yourself being trapped in there, it's like do you fight or flight, isn't it? That comes mm. down to a question, isn't it? But then the attack, you're surrounded by Papi Bande who are going to come in, murder you, torture you, kill you, take you out. But then in our lives, we're we're surrounded by Kaljug, mm. and it's the same situation. we're just not realizing it because yeah. we happily sit up, switch on Netflix yeah and watch the next series yeah and that's what's actually sh- shooting us down because we're not awake to it and we're not awake to our spiritual reality mm. so we're living in the 84 situation all the time but we're just not because we can't physically see it and we're not spiritually turned on we're just like going with the flow and then drowning in the maya so we're drowning in the sroor mm. instead of actually reaching out and coming back up and getting luckily on and so on a spiritual level we're stuck on a spiritual plane of that that's so the attack represents our life really mm-hmm. and how we're going to escape where we're going to get an escape route how we're going to break a cordon that's all our spiritual life isn't it and someone comes and slaps you in the face or someone comes and shoots you or bayonets you or your wife swears at you your daughter wakes up at five o'clock or three o'clock you know mm-hmm. you got a milk and I don't mean but it's, it's like it's it's ongoing isn't it mm-hmm. it's incessant but that's what our life is but we're not turned on to realize that so we're just failing in our own mission And I guess sometimes you need the physical slaps to realize the spiritual ones. Yeah. Uh, and I think is by Fodja Singh Ji Shahid said that the plant is like a bead and to nur- it's like a seed and to nourish that seed every 40 to 50 years, the corn of the yeah. shahid, the blood of the shahid is needed. And I always bring this to point, uh, I'm doing the calculations of the math teacher, like according to that, something's upon the horizon. Yeah, yeah, it is, yeah. And but, the, but the thing is with Pai Fodja Singh as well, minimum three hours of Kanpat roll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On Kalsa Farm, minimum. Yeah. ਅੱਜ ਕੱਲ ਦੋ ਘੰਟੇ ਮਸੀ ਲੱਗਦੀ ਆ ਯੂ نو ਮੀਨ ਡੈਫੀਨਿਟਲੀ ਅਮ ਬਿਸ ਦੇ ਸੋਲ ਸ਼ੂਡ ਸਟਿਲ ਨੀਡ ਟੂ ਕਵਰ ਮੀ ਹੈਵਨ ਸਪੋਕ ਵਾਈਟ ਇਨ ਦਾ ਸਟਫ ਬਿਕਾਜ਼ ਅਮ ਦਾ ਕਨਵਰਸੇਸ਼ਨ ਬੀਨ ਆਈਵ ਜਸਟ ਆਲ ਥੀਸ ਕੁਐਸਚਨਸ ਆਈਵ ਹਾਰਡ ਆਈ ਜਸਟ ਬੀਨ ਔਨ ਦਾ ਸਪੋਟ ਸੋ ਆਈ ਫੀਲ ਇਟਸ ਗੋਇੰਗ ਅ ਡਿਫਰੈਂਟ ਡਾਇਰੈਕਸ਼ਨ ਬਟ ਇਟਸ ਬੀਨ ਅਮੇਜ਼ਿੰਗ ਸੋ ਫਾਰ ਵਿਦ ਦਾ ਪੋਡਕਾਸਟ ਆਮ ਜਸਟ ਸੇਇੰਗ ਅ ਗੂਸ ਬੰਸ ਦਾ ਹੋਲ ਟਾਈਮ ਆਈ ਜਸਟ ਵਨ ਲਾਸਟ ਕੁਐਸਚਨ ਦਸ ਆਫ ਟੌਪਿਕ ਐਸ ਵੈਲ ਐਂਡ ਥੈਨ ਆਈ ਥਿੰਕ ਵੀ ਸ਼ੂਡ ਗੋ ਥਰੂ ਦਾ ਦਾ ਕੁਇਕ ਫਾਇਰ ਰਾਉਂਡ ਥੇਰ ਇਸ ਲੋਡਸ ਆਫ ਕੁਐਸਚਨਸ ਆਫ ਕਮ ਇਨ ਆਈ ਫੀਲ ਦਾ ਬਿਗ ਰੀਸਟਾਰਟ ਆਨ ਦਾ ਦਾ ਸੋ ਮੀਨਸ ਆ ਥੀ ਥੀਸ ਜਸਟ ਕੁਐਸਚਨਸ ਆਫ ਕਮਿੰਗ ਅਪ ਇਟਸ ਜਸਟ ਇੰਟਰਸਟਿੰਗ ਅਗੇਨ ਕੰਪਲੀਟਲੀ ਰੈਂਡਮ ਬਟ ਦਾ ਆਈਡੀਆ ਅਗੇਨ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਯੂ ਟੋਕ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਸਪਿਰਚੁਅਲਿਟੀ ਕਮ ਮਾਈ um and i've seen in some of your talks you spoke about in the past you mentioned the bunch and scar series that you spoke uh, that you've done before as well but in terms of things like nitnim and jobs and so on was there like a minimum or something that i said in more close circles is i think the general six in the, in the general public they don't get access to this kind of stuff mm. unless they uh, like your average 95% of mm. the seeks right it's only those that have links or can speak to you know yeah. s- specific go to six in it they get these kind of conversations yeah. going but to those that are listening 
that we probably never had this conversation, unfortunately. What, like, is there some sort of minimum or is that like, you know, for those Guru Sikhs, if you want to make a difference, you should be doing like, you know, 10 Japji Sahibs, Pachi, yeah. or like Sukhuni Sahib. Is there it, anything like that? There is, Anna, but it's like, your bread and butter is your Satbaniya, hmm. Panjabaniya, Rara Sahib and Sola. That's your ma- bare minimum. Even if you're dying in a hospital bed, you're still doing those, Anna. Hmm. So that's like, and Ajakal, a lot of Amrita is struggle to do that. Anna? So that's your bare minimum, your Satbaniya. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So people don't realize with the wrath, nothing else matters is the bani. You ain't got the bani, you got no wrath, you got nothing. You got no sick yana. So your bare minimum is your bani as a number of tari, sat the bani, yeah. And then it depends who you listen to in terms of the next part, which is so the nameless sons I go to who passed away now as well, yana. they say two and a half hours simran a day. Minimum. Simran. Yeah. So that's Guru Mantar, Mool Mantar, two and a half hours, seated as well. Mm. Yeah, not walking around. Can't do it in the car. Yeah, you can't do it in the car, it's not allowed. Yeah, so you can do it in the car, but that counts extra, Anna, but two and a half seated, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. hours, time. Simran, yeah. and then your Nitane. Yeah, so it's like, even like, we you know, other people say two hours Simran, do do char, but this is two and a half. Mm. So they're saying you're the Swan, your 10% is just your Simran. Oh, okay. Yeah, then your Nitane is over and above that. Yeah, your Panjabani, yeah, your Sukhmana, whatever it may be, you know? So that's what they used to say. In terms of the Taksal, the Sangs who lived in the Jathan, generally back in Babaji's days, especially, you know, and possibly Santana Singh's days before that, the bare minimum used to be Satbaniya and then Panjagranti, which would be so you Satbaniya, then Asadivar, Dakhni Ankar, Siddh Ghosht, uh, Sukhmani Sahib, Shabd Dejari, you know? Yeah, I think that's all of them. Yeah, so that so those barn, yeah, even then, but even if you do the counts and you do the maths, if you do all that, it makes out to be about two and a half hours, even if you faster, right? Or mm. three hours. So that you know the counts of the timings all work out to be roughly the same anyway. Mm. But then in terms of prachar and stuff, Sandhagur Bhajan Singh's written in the Bhoti and Gurmani Bhad Darpan. So I see a lot of pracharaks and the prachar doesn't work because they haven't done the Kamai. If the words can be exactly the same for the speaker, but if they haven't got the Kamai, the, it's that thing with that analogy with the, the Gun, in it. With the mm-hmm. gun and the throwing the bullet, Hannah. So it's if they haven't done the Kamaya, there's a minimum written in there that you should have done this much of Bias before doing Prachar. And then if you have, then it works, Hannah. But then in the Taksal as well, like the Simran isn't that prevalent, but it is on a Gopta level. Mm. Do you get it? So Sandhagur was just saying, like Jimin Paul did his podcast, and I was over the moon when he said Sandhagur was saying to Simran 2 to 4. Because I just said, I just called the Taksal, you know what I mean? But then uh, when you look at any more sayings, like, and they're, they're sayings, they always do Simran before they do Ishnan. And that's what I do as well. So I get up and do Simran first, stop falling asleep, and then get up and I'll just enjoy the times and just fall asleep in the Simran. Right? But the thing is, <laughs> but that's that's like a Pratan thing. So the Pratan right, was a Gursu could get up and do Simran first, then do the Ishnan afterwards, and then do the Nitane, start the day. Right? So that was a Pratan right, right? Obviously differing views like do Shnan first, whatever, but a lot of the Pratan Sampradai Soch is that, right? mm-hmm. But then in the Taksal, what is prevalent, has become prevalent as well, is 30 male of Mool Mantra a day. So 33 male of 108 beads, right? The problem with the Mool Mantra is, once you start doing it, your time decreases. Mm, it's so it's better to do a time. Mm. Rather than a number. Rather than a number. Yeah. You can't do the 30 male as a target, but then bring it to a time. So the Gurbani, the Japs, like people say, do 10 Japji Sahibs and whatever. I've never been a fan of that. I'm mm. not going to lie on it. And I've never done Panjagranti. Mm. Apart from in dire situations for a few weeks and stuff. But generally, I've never done Panjagranti. But if someone says, I'm going to say Panjagranti, I'm going to say Panjagranti. I'm going to say Panjagranti because I spent so much time on Baba Ji. I'm going to say Panjagranti. But I never really did like it. So I just done Sukhmani Sahib and other Baniya, really. But I never, because my focus has always been since day one is the Simran. And the problem with the Simran is if you don't get in in the Amrath Villa, the only other chance you really have is at night. Mm. So it's like, Vele ki bandagi ka vele ki takara. So Vele ki bandagi means you, your bandagi, your simran is at the right time, which is Amrath Villa. And if you do it at the wrong time, Vele ki takara, which means the wrong time. And then your mind takara, basically you can't concentrate because mm. the world's all going on. So you can mm. only do it at night or in the morning. And I really struggle with that if I don't get up on time or whatever, and things happen in your life. So you've got that going on, Anna, but you need to have like a bare minimum of go to six needs to be two and a half hours in a day. Even if they include the nitanim in that. Of general abhyas, yeah. goodbye. Yeah, yeah, whatever it may be, Hannah. But that's got to be seated. Mm. Yeah. You can't do walking around if you're only doing that. Mm. But I wouldn't count driving your car. No tian anywhere Yeah, else. you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. 
Mm. So d- walking around doesn't matter. Like uh, Sri Guru Nanak Dev used to have a danda in the morning where they'd put a danda and they'd walk backwards and forwards to teach us to stay awake. Because in India, they don't have any sadhana. Because in India, in the heat, like 45 degrees and stuff. So I don't know what you're like, what can you do? You've got to do something. I don't just sit in a chala and just sit in water, cold water and stay awake. Right? Mm. But so there's those things. But then in terms of Pratana Ravet, right? this is going to get a bit advanced. Right? Pratana Ravet, Guru Six would always do a 40-day job, which would start on Maggi. So it'd start on 13th, 14th of January for 40 days. So in terms of a lot of Guru Six still do that. So even Santanup Singh Dragi, he does it. وہ چالی دن دا جاب کرتا ہے نوٹ شور ہاؤ لانگ ہی وہ آورز ہی ڈوز بٹ چالی دن دا جاب ریئلی منیمم شوڈ بی ایٹ آورز رائٹ سائڈ منیمم ٹویلو آورز اے ڈے یا کس باقی بارہ گھنٹے کرنا کیا سونا ہی ہے یو مین ایون فی یو کین ڈو ٹویلو آورز ایف یو تھنک وی آر نا ایٹ آورز از ایزی یو اسٹل گاٹ سکسٹین آورز ٹو ایٹ وٹ ایور سلیپ ہے نا سو اٹس بٹ اوبویسلی دیس سو تھنگس یو ہیو ٹو بلڈ اپ ٹو سو یو کان جس سے آئی گو ڈو ایٹ آور جاب ہے نا لائک پاگل لائک می وڈ ونس ہے So, but the thing is, a lot of us have developed certain things in our lives and then you might do a job for three hours or four hours because it's easier and you might be going to work and build things like up. that, Hannah, and build it up. But it's only these things that build our spiritual base, Hannah. So it's like we have to do these things. So I remember Karali Ali Santana, he's still around. I can't remember what his name is now. No, 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 Karali Ali Santana, he's quite young. But when we were at university and stuff, oh, job, what the vandatham, that's a good light. So if there's a tihar, a good book coming on, he'd say, like, we're doing 150,000 Sukhani Sahibs. So like some of us as young guys, we would take on like, I don't know, 200 Sukhani Sahibs to do in like 30 days. And then you just, you'd just be like doing it. And you might say, oh, you're doing it too fast or whatever, Hannah. But you, you had a target to get it done, Hannah. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't like, but it was those things like build your spiritual strength to be then give you confidence to do stuff, Hannah, to go further and further and further. And then you, but then it has to be a very good system. And people eat a lot of food when they do jobs and that just ruins it. You can't eat a lot. You have to reduce your food as well. to stay awake and stuff. And you have to do a bit of uh, mobility exercises to help your sitting and stuff like that. So there is a, other stuff involved, but that's become very good mm. in our modern day Sikhi. Our modern day Sikhi is wear a bana, mm. wear a three footy karpan, don't look like a missionary like me wearing this shit and tie, whatever I was wearing at work. And I wear, don't wear a tie, but it, yeah. Yeah. But it's just like, if you have this one, if you have three footy, then you die. But if you have a name of Santhya, then you have a name of Santhya. پر تو سونے آن شان ہونی چاہیے تھی خالصے دی کہ چنگے لگدے بہت سونے لگدے ہے یا تا وہی ساکی پھر ورج دی ہے نا گرو گوبند سنگھ دی کہ بکڑے دے کھل شیر دی لاتی ہے نا یا سو گرو گوبند سنگھ ڈیڈ اے ایکسپیریمنٹ کز گرو سکس واز سینگ او وی کانٹ کانسنٹریٹ آن ان اتنے ایم تھنگز لائک دیٹ مارج ہاؤ پس ہے نا سو گرو گوبند سنگھ ار انند پور صاحب گا پائے دیا سنگھ ٹو گو ان سٹیل سم ونز بکرا کو یا اینڈ دین پو And they'd killed a shear the day before the lion and they put the lion skin on top of the bakra and then they returned the bakra. Yeah. And the bakra, after a day or two, like all the other bakra were running away from me because, or the bear, I don't know which one it was, like a sheep or a, yeah, or a goat. Yeah. And uh, after a few days, all this year in Akatogi, because even though he's wearing the lion skin, he started doing his meh, meh. <laughs> and... Uh, And then the owner started beating him up. He said, you met and then he said, love them all this, took his color for and stuff. And then the girl came out and said, Anandpur Sahib, what happened? Then Maharaj said, what happened? He said, this is the thing. That you have to eat my food, share it. You have to eat your food, but you have to eat your food, you have to eat your food, you have to eat your food, because you don't concentrate, you don't do it right. I'll tell you everything. It's like, uh, Baba Hari Singh Randhavi Ali came to the UK a few years ago. And we were at the Seek to Inspire camp. And all the Pracharaks who were doing the talks at the camp, we were all sitting in a room, so there's about six, seven of us. And one of the Pracharaks said, he said, I met Baba Hari Singh Randhavi Ali a day or two ago. And he said, I said to him, how, how do we get our liberation done? And Baba Hari Singh Randhavi Ali said, just do what the Panjabi Ali told you, and your liberation is done. So this debate broke out in the room between all the Pracharaks, all six, seven of us. Like, is the answer right? Like the guy who posed the question said he couldn't believe the answer. What was it? Yeah. Too simple? Yeah, it's too simple, Anna. Mm. And then I interjected and I said, no, he's right. He said, what do you mean? I said, well, look, what did the Panjabiyari tell you? The Panjabiyari tell you, don't look at any other woman in the wrong way. Earn an honest living. Job you can't do similar, 
Mm. Yeah. Do you have you asked of your Vaigur Simran Guru Mantra all times? Do you your Mul Mantra? I said, if you do all those things, your Brahm Gyan's done. <laughs> we just don't. It's like basics of Sikhi. Sikhi is basic. Mm. There's no basics of Sikhi. Is there? You know what I mean? That sense, mm. right? Sikhi is basic, but we we want to make it into this spiritual. Gymnastics and all this, and I do we all this. We want the thing. lightning bolt and yeah, all yeah, the, you know what I mean. We want yeah. someone to present yeah. it on a red oh, carpet. Yeah. We want to go on like uh, Dorothy's road to Oz, isn't it? And see all these people <laughs> on the way, Hannah. But it's like it's it's such kind of still there, and I never moved, Hannah. Such kind of the 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 It's got the hill in it, so it's like we do all these things, but really, it's, it doesn't nothing changes. So even with old history, like we're talking about eighty four today, Sada Chirasi hoya, Sada Kalukara Ege hoy, it all repeats. Like by Fajr Singh says, it doesn't change. What changes is us. Because mm. we're Vishraya from Paramatma until we get back to God, we can't. We're just going to keep coming back and being involved in this Maya circle. Mm. Go on. Should we go for the questions then? Oh, yeah, man. you know, zip through them. That we'll, was, we'll finish thank off. you so much uh, for sharing that um, with the Sangat. Um, let's go for the Instagram questions. So we uh, put a post out earlier today. We asked the Sangat uh, what questions would you like to ask? Um, so yeah, Bob and Seth are in that group. Which group in the Monday podcast. one? Podcast. Yeah. Andy. Yeah. Good buddy. Do you want to start? Um, yeah, so a quick question was uh, why did Sanji not leave Darbar Sahib? I think we've answered that earlier, haven't we? In that it's already, it's karma, na? Okay. Sanji, it's all going to happen. It's preordained, and you can't change mm. the old history, and it's going to happen. Um, if, if the revolutionary sick of 1984 was still alive, how would the bond be different? The bond wouldn't be different again. It's the same thing. The, do you know the trajectory of history? These people come to change it, but we can't change it. So whatever God's going to happen, it's only going to happen according to the right time. Mm. You know what I mean? It's like me sitting here today. I only came today, first time to this house and whatever. It was going to happen today. Mm. I was going to eat, drink your father's great tea today. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You can't, so we don't really understand. Like we have that saying, don't we? Anjal. Yeah. Anatha Jal, our food and water is written for where we're going to have it every day. Mm. So uh, it's that intricate. So these things are all going to happen anyway. We can argue about it being right or wrong yeah. and be judgmental, but it was all going to happen. So even the Indra Gandhi, we can say Indra Kutti Maro Jutti Hana, mm. but that was going to happen as well. She was going to go to Narak and live there for <laughs> till the sun and moon exist. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that she's going to live. So like people, some people try to argue like, oh, Actually, isn't Indira Gandhi going to get her kalyan done because she fought against the things and then fighting against the things and they come in like, no. Yeah, so Mahapur, I went to and they said that until there's a sun and a moon, she will stay in hell. It's a long time. Yeah, it's a long time. <laughs> uh, what can we do to help on like a daily basis? Bit of an open question. It's, it's an easy one, really. Mm. Do you need the name? Do you Barney? And from that, your Pantak Seva will come. You've got to save your guru first. Once mm. you save your guru, your seva will come. If you want it like now, I live in regret. So I used to do a dasa to do seva of Sheet Parvars. And then one of the Sheet Parvars, <laughs> they had to do Bainti to me three times to do a translation work. And I just felt so bad. I was like, I did a dasa to get this seva. Mm. And now I don't want to do it. So then I had to do it. You know what I mean? It took me months to like translate a certain person, piece of work. It's not still not published, Anna. It's on the shelf. But like, so we have to be very careful. Like, you know what you ask for? You ask for it for one day, but then in 10 days time, you might not want it, but you're still going to get it. Mm. It'll still be delivered to you because you did that monk. And if mm. you do it with a true heart, it will come. Mm. So sometimes like we're not spiritually advanced enough to like realize what we're asking for. But then we can't not then not deliver as well. Mm. Do you get it? It's, it gets quite complicated. And so in passion, we can do things easily. But then afterwards, it's like, can you deliver? I remember saying, telling me actually... Um, Kind of like a not a get out way to that, but a, a nice thing to always I do at is Mara Jo Tanu Badi Lagda Otesanu Lekeja. Whatever you think is best for me, yeah. just take me there. Don't ask for specific things. Yeah, yeah. And even on that, I think when you hear about 84, and I remember coming into 84 thinking we need to overthrow the Kartak, we need to do all this mad stuff. But obviously, I'm just an A level student listening to a video on <laughs> YouTube, and I <laughs> you get wound up because you don't have a, a sphere of influence. Mm. And Simon Sinek in his in his I talk about this and Jugalaj Singh talked about this. He said that you have um, three levels. Well, you have your sphere of influence and um, your sphere of, of what you want to uh, affect. Um, and at the moment, the, small, the one of influence is very small and where you want to reach is very big. 
And we're trying to make the jump straight away. But he said, if you just focus on what you can influence right now in your life, that circle will grow. And I'm sure you've seen that in like Bantik yeah, yeah, Seva. Yeah. Is it might yeah. start off with one translation, yeah. then it goes to an interview, then it goes to you being the 1984 yeah. representative of the UK, <laughs> and then it goes to a podcast. So I would say as well, and I've seen that in my own journey with Guru Sahib's Kirpa and the Sangha Sisa, that just start on whatever you can within mm. this moment in your life. Um, even if it might seem tiny, no Seva is tiny. And slowly that network will build, your Pro Sahib will build, your Jeevan will build, and who knows, Guru Sahib will take you wherever you're meant to end up. But yeah, without Nathan and Barney, mm. it's kind of, it's all going to flop. Um, another question, a bit of a controversial one, um, but how come different groups did not get along um, during that time? So here they spoke about the Babbars and the Daksaldis. Uh, did they get along? Did they not get along? Why? Um, it's, it's quite simple, Anna. If you look at Punjab now, yeah? So the thing is, in our own families, we have fallouts. Yeah. Yeah. In Jatabandi, we will have fallouts. That's a given. Yeah. There's a lot of misconception with the Tuxal and the Babarzana. They did fall out at certain points, but they made up as well. But the thing is, their mission was all the same. So the mission never changed. And the Babur Khalsa has got a mass recruitment of Daksal sayings in there. Yeah, so it's it's not it's not like the Babur Khalsa as it's projected sometimes there's only been the Khan King Jatha. It's never been that. Mm. And you've got photos of uh, Vadava Singh, who's the current Jathadar, uh, Jathadar Talvinder Singh, Luan Singh Nagoki doing Amr Sanchars, where the BB are not wearing Keskiya. Mm. So they're Panj and they've not put Keski Rath as a thing. Mm. And they're the three, two, the Jathadar, the Babur Khalsa, let alone anything else. Right? So there's, there's things like that. But at the same time, the way you got to view it is, we can differ on our, our views and differ on our methods, but we don't differ on our mission. Mm. Mm. If we differ on our mission and our sadan, then it's a problem. Oh, then it's a massive problem. Right? But if we don't we're differ on those things, it doesn't matter. It's like, you got how many teams in the Premier League? Right? They're all playing football, aren't they? Mm. They're all playing team from the top. It doesn't matter who gets to the top in the end. Right? Someone wins the league, whatever it is. In the same way, the seat groups, if they're all aiming for the same thing, one's going to get more prominence, one's going to get less. If the mission's the same, it doesn't matter. But they all complement each other. Mm. So on a mass, you know, on a, on a level of like mass media, people will talk about differences and uh, make things up. But underneath that, there's a hell of a lot of yekta. Because these guys died together. Mm. These guys fought together. They so, attend, yeah. attend each other's funeral. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So pre-84, the Smirsh Regiment and the Bubbers, they were handing love. They were all doing the same stuff. They were all doing stuff together. It wasn't like, you know what I mean? It wasn't like, oh, we're separate from you. There was a lot of things in joint missions. And even prior, at post-84, and all the major uh, sodhya that happened were never singularly one just the mm. They were always joint. Because it takes a lot of planning and a lot of time to do certain things. So it was always joint because someone couldn't get money at that time. Someone couldn't get arms. and So it was, even prior to 84, it was like that as well. There's another question here. Um, well, two questions. Why did Indira Gandhi attack the Sikhs? I think, to be fair, I think that's been mentioned in a previous video, huh? Mm. Um, if probably someone's to answer Yeah, that, but that. please do mention it. Uh, and also, was the Sangat warned that the army could attack the Rabar Sahib at any time? And you can extend that question to say, um, how aware were the Sikhs that an attack was prominent? Yeah, so Indira Gandhi attacking the Rabar Sahib, obviously the Tamil Murcha was ongoing. So mass civil disobedience. And it got to the point where uh, she was saying the talks had broken down, but who's going to the talks? It's the Akalis. It's not something else. Saying. Yeah. Yeah. So there's really, there's loads of different accounts on this. But in the Sangarsh, what everyone says is, is the Akalis told Indra Gandhi to attack and that there's no peace with something else saying, and you can't make peace with him. Could you name who are the Akalis that people at Longo so, are then? So the Akali Dal is a, a party, but there's a few people who get named in this process which would be Prakash Singh Badal, Balwan Singh Ramuwalia, who might still be alive. And they don't mention Longawal in that list of people. Yeah. So when I did the uh, interview with Mahant a few weeks uh, last year, which is going to get published, like I said, Mahant said, and this was shocking to me, Mahant said, he goes, look, what really happened? But there's obviously there's this is disparate views. Yeah. So we can't say which one's right or wrong. You can decide yourselves. Anna. But what Mahant said is he said, look, what really happened is Indra said to Santanal Singh, I'll accept all the Anandpur Sahib Mata. Okay. <laughs> Will you call it off? And San said yes. Okay. Yeah. So what he said, Mahant, he said, look, that was done. But the Akalis knew, if that happens, Gaha Santana Singh Banunga Mukhmantri, Sandata Kamagya, I will lose all our power. It's done. 
So they they went to her and said, no, he's he's lying to you. He's going to ruin it. You need to attack. Wow. You need to attack the Darbar Sahib. Yeah. And so that's what Mahan said to me that day, which I hadn't heard Anna, over all those years. I'm not going to lie. And that's like an interesting view because the other side of it is the army at, go and attack the library and the museum, all the artifacts of the Darbar Sahib and yep. put it on light. But they put it on light after emptying it because what they were looking for was a letter from Indira Gandhi to Santanar Singh. And any lo- if you find any letters or any written form between Santanar Singh and Indira Gandhi, Santanar Singh writes Sirimati to her and she writes Santaji. What does Sirimati mean? Sirimati means like a supreme woman. Like it's like a it's yeah, part respect, of your, respect. respectful thing. Like you'd like, you know how we'd write uh, uh, dear whatever or so, yours sincerely. Yeah. Sirimati would be used something in, uh, okay, locally okay. in India. Hannah. So the thing is, so there was like that, even though on like a kind of mass media thing, they made it out like loggerheads, but in written form, that it's very cordial and respectful. So what they say is the army went into the library and took, stole the artifacts because all they wanted was that one letter, which would have proven that she was okay. Interesting. And then you've got even Rajiv Gandhi going on record in April 84. So we've got a video on a car publishes YouTube called Genocide 1984. The quote's on there, so you can find it in there. But Rajiv Gandhi says there's no uh, issue with us and the Sikhs. And the Hindus, the Sikhs, we're all one. Very interesting. So the thing is, there's like, there's like, there's like Machiavellian politics that went on. <laughs> and then, so Dara, Longawal, Ramawalia, Bibi Amarjit Kaur, they all walk out and get saved in the attack. Whereas the Yatris mm. get killed. Mm. So how was that deal done to get them out? And you can say the government did it to make them out to be bad people. Because even uh, Longawal, even though like we've sort of disdained him a lot over the years, Anna, uh, he's seen as like a Mahapur by a lot of people. And very softly spoken and not being a political banda who got used. Yeah. Obviously, he didn't have a lot of backbone after 84. But it's like, could we take that colossal pressure on our spine? Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? We can criticize the guy. Anna. So it's like, it's really weird, like the view among Longawal, when you talk to people who actually were around him. And they were saying, and he couldn't handle the pressure. It was just a circumstance. Yeah, it was just a circumstance that led to him. Anna. So the Indira Gandhi attacking, it was made out to be mass media. And also Indira Gandhi also electioneering to get elected again. To destroy the bogey, the Sikhs. So, scapegoat. Yeah. But so communal politics is a massive thing in India, post the British. So they basically picked up the same tactics from the British. Mm. So that, that was part of the national engineering of the whole attack and everything she, else. She needed a victory. Yeah. But if you look at the statistics and everything else, there's no proof to why the attack should occur or anything. So yeah. even the Indian government white paper, which was published in uh, July 1984, there's no evidence of why the attack. And then the second part of your question which was, uh, was there any warning given? Yeah. So, uh, Yanni Jal Singh, who was the president of India in 1984, in his uh, memoirs, so the book's called Memoirs of Yanni Jal Singh, which was po- uh, published posthumously after he died. He didn't publish them while they were alive. He says, and he's the commander in chief of the army, he says no warning was given. Mm. And open, fire was op- opened by the army without giving any warning for anyone to escape or surrender. So that's mm. the president of India saying that I don't need to say that. And he's a pro Indira Gandhi person. And I've got in front of me quite a few quotes from General Sena, who yeah. initially was employed, but then actually said, I'm not being a part of this, right? Yeah. Um, and he, you know, he, on, on the 16th of July, 1984, says that the army action was not the last resort as Prime Minister Indira Gandhi would have us believe. It had been in her mind for more than 18 months, shortly after the Akali agitation of 1982, the uh, Dunbid Murja. The cantonment in the Dune Valley, where a com- complete replica of the Golden Temple complex had been built. Another training involving aviation research center commandos was given in the Sarswa, Sarswa area and the Yamuna Bay in he- helicopters converted into gunships. So there's plenty of yeah. non Sikh um, references yeah. to it. General Sena, he's got an interview, I think it's on Fair and Square. I can't remember the, I can't remember the guy's name is now. He's a, uh, he used to be a Patrakar, but then he became a uh, ARP. Politician. Yeah. But in that interview, if you Google it, General Sinha, you'll find it on uh, YouTube. General Sinha was actually called in to arrest something else in 1981. Yeah. Yeah, at Metta as well. Yeah. So he, in that interview, he, he talks about that and the excessive want of force, which he didn't allow, and then the planning of the attack as well. So he's got both in there and he talks about how oh, he would have run the attack and put Maharaj Sloop outside the Yeah, Paramount. very respectful yeah. way. Yeah, so... So that you, you've got all that in front of you and I like how they could have done it in a peaceful way and they, they had no interest in doing that. Which and then I would also bring in army personnel who don't know Punjab, don't know the sayings inside and Punjab police from Amritsar knew all the sayings 
could recognize them, yep. could point them out, and they didn't use any local administration. Mm. Or oh, we'll try and link that um, interview because uh, it'd be good for me to watch as well, definitely. Mm. Uh, were there any other last ones? Just a few ones and we'll finish off. Um, for those that are listening, uh, and especially in their households, they have parents, uncles, and so on, that are anti and they say things, you know, Sanji's a um, terrorist, et cetera, et cetera. What would you say to those people that may have these difficult conversations or listen to this uh, slander in their households? I hear it in my household. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? So it's, it's, I, I think what it is, so long as you got the knowledge, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what people say, Anna. So long mm. as you know your knowledge, you got you can back it up with evidence. Mm. Then beyond that, you can't convert anyone. It doesn't matter. Mm. All we can do is give, present knowledge to people in a sensible manner. If they don't accept it, that's up to them, Anna. Mm. It's like you make perfect food for someone putting on a plate. If they don't want to eat it, they're not going to have the hunger, they're not going to eat it, Anna. Mm. So some people are going to be entrenched in their view that they don't want to change. Mm. The Sanjana Al Singh is this or that. And they, they don't have to change. It's mm. a so for us it don't make, make a difference hmm. I think for a lot of people as well, It's a safe option To believe that they're in the wrong yeah, Because yeah. if not Then that means they're presented With a problem that They need to face yeah. That we are being attacked It's, it's like psychological dissonance Isn't it? Yeah. So you got the restaurant owner Who has a Gucci turban Whatever Hannah. It's like That guy has probably got people In his family Who got killed in Delhi and stuff And he just wants to be pro-India yeah. So he doesn't have to struggle again. Yeah. So his family doesn't have to take bullets or anything. Yeah, yeah, you get yeah. it? So it's like that thing. It's Some people, it's just easier to take the... Uh, the follow the narrative. It's like the... What do they call him in America? The house Negro. Yeah. yeah? Mm. It's that thing, isn't it? It's, it's easier just to be normalized Anna, and be acceptable of mm. the oppression because then you don't have to fight the oppression. Mm. Just moving on to the last topic. Uh, what is it called? Uh, Carl Publishers. A car Why publisher, was that set up as well? Yeah, a car Publishers really... We started on the sort of uh, basis of Babaji. So Babaji, I asked Babaji to start translating the Red Mariyadda. So we started that. Then we went on to say, can we do the Jeevani of the sayings? So the lives of the sayings we gave Shidiya. Mm. And Babaji said, yes, do that. Nah? And then from that, obviously, we started publishing. And the Duxal didn't really support us as an institute, even while Babaji was alive. Mm. So they made parallel translations of things that I'd already done. And tried to print them, and then they're like, like instead of Brahmgani, they're like, uh, was it possessed soul? So they got like done wrong translations, yeah. So there's like there's a lot of politicians, <laughs> politics in Tanzania, <internally, laughs> <Anna. laughs> and uh, we we didn't try keeping Babaji in those Galana, we kept them out. Mm. But then obviously my translations remained, and those have disappeared over the years and things like that, Hannah. And some of them were actually okay, but the publications have sort of disappeared as well. So ours remained, and then all the Tuxal websites sort of copied ours and things like that. And uh, but then we obviously we game of love. I think it was more about our publishers because I'm a cantankerous person. I can't work with anyone. Mm. And through seva and activism, I realized like I'm not a people person and I can't work with people. So I thought, you know what? Forget all this. <laughs> just make my own organization and just do it my own way. Fair and enough. I was like, <laughs> Mm. But the thing is about Game of Love, our thing with the car publishers, and we are controversial, and I am a controversial figure, and I do upset a lot of people, and I say sorry to you all, yeah? <laughs> but the thing is, it was set up on the basis to say things that no one else will say. Mm. So even if that means me going against Sikh Jathabandiya sometimes, and I, I'm wrong for doing that a lot of the time, Anna, it's to say things that no one else will say. So we will then say it, because no one else is going to say it. But then sometimes it becomes a dangerous game where you know certain pristine intelligence and certain bande who are sarkari. But if you say that, sare and rona, and they can't accept the truth. Mm. You get it? So it's like, but in written form now, and as an organization, we've got a lot of sevadar, a lot of them are female, and they all hide behind the platform. They've all agreed to go on the website and put their photos on, but we just never got around to doing it. Mm. So it's like, it's driven through that. But the thing is, we, we are just producing material. That's all we're doing. And we've got Seek Learning Trust now, which is our shoot-off charity. And that's non-political. So you can go to seeklearningtrust.com and you can just download resources and of things. Anna. So we've got 70 weeks of uh, Gurmat classes on there. Pelle Pasha, Tupanjami Pasha. But a car publishers organization, that's how we started. And we've branched off into other things and we continue to do things now. But it was more about saying things that no one else will say. But we've gone more to a spiritual path now rather than a political path. Hmm. And uh, I've got the name wrong, but is it the monologues or the fictional story writing that you do? Uh, that's very powerful. Uh, tell us a bit about that. What is the reason for doing that as well? So like we, the, the first one was 
people sort of uh, criticized me for making one on Jumkar Digari, hmm. and they said, like, how can you fictionize this when the history exists in the grants and the Portia? When you look at the grants and the Portia, the history doesn't exist. Because if you actually write an account on Jumkar Digari, there's very little actually stated. When you get into the actual fighting and everything else, there actually isn't that much there. You can so, see the events are outlined. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. But you know what I mean? So yeah. when you get to the detail, unless you fictionalize it like a daddy or do something, mm. you can't actually make the story like real. Do you mm. know what I mean? So I fictionalized it a bit, but it's based on facts. Mm. Obviously, I've missed out certain things in there as well because I, I didn't know certain things. Anna. And uh, so some people criticize me, but what people don't realize is all history is mythias. It's all mythology because the truth is God who's Nirgun, who's invisible. And that Nirgun doesn't exist in the visible. So all this that we see is all Maya. It's all illusion. So you know what I mean? But the whole point of history or any teaching is to get you to the point of realization and get you inspired. Mm. So it doesn't matter if it's true or not. Do you get it? So we can't get hung up on like the history being right or wrong. So that's what we did with Chimkar Digari. We never like went ahead with animating and things like that because that was a bit, people couldn't handle the thing mm. from Yana. So we then we did the audio drama of... Uh, Innocence Lost in 1984, Andy. which is an innocent family just turns up at the Dabar Sahib and then gets caught up and shot. Does and then we got powerful. criticized by people saying, no, it's a battle of Amritsar. Why you don't talk about innocence for? And you're like, hello, a lot of innocent people were there. Mm. So it's like, you know, your perspective. Mm. There's different perspectives, isn't there? Mm. So the book that's never been made, which I could write mm. in a month or two if I got down to it, mm. is writing about 84 from the perspective of Indira Gandhi mm. when the attack happens from her desk and her being on it. All India TV, mm. then from General Brad, then from Sant Janal Singh, then from Innocent Fam. So, you know, like you have those films where it's, yeah. from diff- it's the same three days, four days. You can do it from six different perspectives, couldn't you? Mm. But we just never got around to doing that. And so, the other ones we've done, we've done The Innocence Lost. So, that was done. And then we did, uh, we've done also The 84 Attack mm. in a fictionalized form. Andy. Yeah, which sort of goes through and it mentions all the characters. And then we've sort of fictionalized it because we don't, no one knows what really happened. Mm. Like, because even Mahant, he was there. And he survived, but he only knows what happened in front of his eyes. He doesn't what happened at the Kaltak side. So it's like, it's quite hard. Another history, it's like, you have to sometimes, but our issue is more about inspiring people. Mm. Yeah. So where we've been factual, we've been factual. We've said that. And where we've said it as well, we say at the start, this is a fictionalized account. And it's, 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 it's a fault of the person if they think it's a true one, if we've not fictionalized at the yeah, start. Yeah, yeah. And I, obviously it gives us a... Uh, what do you call it? Like it gives us license, creative license, creative license to put in things there that we couldn't otherwise say. Mm. Mm. Do you get it? So, like in the in Tumgar Digari, we make up a fictional character of a Wazir Khan who's in the jung, who then gets converted by Guru Gobind Singh, and he actually sabotages all the Mughals in the jung because mm. he fought because when he has Darshan and Guru Gobind Singh from the he goes on a rooftop and sees Guru Sahib and Uda come mm. mm. and so but the thing is. Those things happened in our history. They did, not it? Okay, I'm going to make my own myth and make my own myth and make my own myth. It happened. That happened in Anandpur Sahib beforehand in different jungs. The principle, right? Yeah. So the thing is what people don't realize, those things happened and Guru Sahib has got that power. So even that talk about the sayings in, in the attack and Guru Gobind Singh, yeah. we put that in the fictional account because mm. we couldn't say that at that point. Because like, Singh Sahib just wants to say something like that. So we put it in a fictional account. Yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. We can't. So sometimes the, the fictional gives us creative license to put in things that we might know are true and did happen, but we can't prove. Can't be quantified, yeah. Yeah. So mm. like even uh, Sundu being the leader of the Smirsh Regiment, I've known for I don't know how many years, 20 years, but I could never say it until like the last two years. Mm. But in, in terms of 84, all the witness eyewitness accounts came out two years ago. Because they were working on trying to uh, win elections. So the Akalis mm-hmm. gave permission to everyone in Punjab who was a survivor of 84 to go on this mic and do interviews. So there were about 12 interviews just popped up overnight. So those are there. But we didn't have the uh, we didn't have that information when we wrote our books, or even NS Wife when they done the Battle of Amritsar movie, they didn't have those interviews. Mm-hmm. So like NS Wife, well, the sayings were like really in a, a quandary when they released the film, because they said to me, they go, people are gonna say. Why do you interview all those people? Because they didn't exist. Yeah. So when they when people say to me, like, what were you doing? Like the all these people come out now because no one spoke. Mm. So you know you're talking at the start of this podcast, like the development of time. People now speak. Mm. Back in our day, people didn't speak who were there in the attack. Mm. So you got Dr. Bhagwan Singh, 
who became the de facto leader of all in the Sikh Sun's Federation. He was in the attack. He says he didn't fire a bullet because he didn't need to. Got out alive, came to the UK after, 20 years after. I met him at Plek Gondara and he wouldn't have to speak a word to me. Mm. And now he's doing interviews on it. Mm. But at the time, he wouldn't speak a word to me. I asked him, the Seng said to me, grab him. He was like the leader of the Federation for nine months after the attack because all the leadership was gone. And he was in the attack, he fought. And he never, he never spoke a word to me because they were scared at that time. Mm. There's a Benji, I um, forgot the name um, of the organization. They're doing a lot of um, political work um, in terms of courts and lawyers. Within just, one just one thought, Benji, yeah. yeah. And she said the similar thing. She goes, now 34 years after, the kind of, the trauma is still there, but it's reduced enough that people are actually less fearful and can actually speak about it. And I guess yeah. sometimes time is the best healer for that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I totally resonate with what you're saying. Mm. Um, Another question, sorry, that comes to mind. Oh, bro, I'm in a bush, I've been holding him all this time. Man. <laughs> so, Come on, man. So sorry. <laughs> I've been holding him for a while. I thought you were going to stop now. Go on. Hurry up, man. Uh, you spoke a lot about, you know, you can be quite controversial and a lot of things, a lot of stick that you get yeah, yeah. for the seva that you do. But as anybody will know, when it comes to doing seva or bantu di seva, everybody will get stick. Nobody is everybody's best friend, right? So No, no, have... but I've got no friends. That's, <laughs> There's that's a difference it. in it. I did it, yeah. And, <laughs> but the, the, the idea of having thick skin and, and for those people that are doing seva, it, it can be very, and Riji spoke about this in his podcast as well, it can be a ro- very lonely path, a very difficult path as well. So what would you just, just say to the Sangat who want to do seva and they may not realize actually it can be very hard? Yeah, I think, see, it, it, what it depends on, and I'm like, when I started off in Silva, as part of BOSS, we had a support network, mm. we had things, we had everything. So remember, I, got, I, I nearly got jumped by skinheads in commentary when I was a student. And Bin came to me, Binder came to me and he goes, should we go to the pubs? Go and find them. I was like, are you nuts? <laughs> yeah? All these people are going to be drunk and stuff. We're going to walk into pubs. On a Saturday night, we're in the Stara, just because some guy started on me and nothing happened. I got away, scratch, scratch free. And he was ready. Mm-hmm. And that's, that, that was the judge bar. And I like me and Bindra have fallen out over the years and made friends again and stuff as well. Mm. But the thing is, like the judge bar in our circle was that. And we would give our lives for each other. But you have to have that circle when you start. Because if you don't, everything will destroy you. Yeah. yeah. So we had, like, we had people like willing to put their lives on the fl- line for you. You could find one AM, they'd come to your house, whatever, Hannah. So we had all that support network. And the ones who really messed us around were the politicians. The politicians tried to get us arrested, tried to ruin our Jathabandia, tried to uh, snide us in cases, tried to put us at the front. Politicians, what you mean like people within Gordara politics? Yeah, all the Siane. Okay. Siane Jathabandia. Yeah, so they all tried to tool us. Yeah, but they were scared of us as well because they knew the power that we had all their John Arjuan with us as well. So they were scared of that, but then they all tried to tool us as well and use us for their own purposes. So that was a bit hard. But now, like, I think like once you've been through it and you've had your sport networks afterwards, it doesn't matter because mm. then it doesn't, it doesn't make a difference. But when you look at 84, post 84, post movement, now we have the Bihar Punjab, now we're supporting people who run the Dera in India. We have 30 addicts living there at the moment. We've got 60 things living at the Dera. We've got going to missions all the time. Anna. We can't talk about these things. So a lot of the things we do now in Punjab, so where it gets hard is when you actually do the real work of the real activism, that's very lonely. That's really lonely. Where I've got psychiatrists saying to me, yeah, why aren't you having therapy? You need therapy. Yeah. Mm. And these are Sikh uh, psychiatrists who are famous with Anakam, who sometimes I do speak to a bit Anna, about cases and things I'm dealing with. But it becomes very, very scary because you have like cases of sexual abuse and other things and no one will take a stance. So it's like, oh, go to her in the sink because he's going to do it. Because mm. no one else is going to. So yeah, that. so you get know what I mean? And even like political cases or legal cases, like people will give me, everyone will give my number. Mm. Yeah, which isn't like, it's not an easy task, Anna. And then you've got everyone looking at you and stuff like that. So it gets really hard when you do real Sangarsh. That's when your Barney comes in. And if you haven't got that, then you won't, won't last in that sphere as well, Anna. So when you do real activism, if you haven't got the Barney, the uh, foundation, Anna, that's when you'll lose. But the thing is, we've been through this with our sayings since Baba Tark Singh passed away. And Babaji was our support and our everything. So if anything happened, it was one phone call, was it? But after 2004 to now, 19 years, the struggle's our own. Financially, physically, emotionally, psychologically, it's our own. So we have to be very careful how we carry that burden in terms of our spheres of seva. 
So we have to do, and who have we got? We've got Guru Sahib. Mm. Yeah. And Guru Sahib's there for us. And Guru Sahib's Pratak as well. It's not like, you know, like you were talking earlier, like, Ardaas Sahib saying, Maharaj, Jho Maharaj kar dunge. If you got the power, na? Mm. Especially if you got the power, Sahib, and do an Ardaas. Chote Pasha, Shime Pasha. Oh, koi chakkar ni, koi jeri marji aajave taakta na. So we've got things going on in India with our dairy and stuff as well, and things that we run, where Sarkara are trying to overtake the dairy and other things, na? And trying to like, uh, basically obliterate like a million pounds of investment. I'm not even lying. A million pounds we spent in Hindustan and they're trying to take it from us. And they might be successful. But we've started building a one next door. <laughs> we've screwed their plan. But it's like, it's, people can't like comprehend some of the things that we've done. And we can't comprehend it mm. because we didn't do it. Mm. But we have to be very careful because we can't speak openly about these things of how, what went on, what happened. You look at the Biyad Biyad. Loki can they are not going to be able to do so they lagi jande hai. Yeah, lagi jande hai. But it's happening, isn't it? People do get the punishment, Anna. The one, one a case of all mention, Anna, which doesn't didn't make into media, Anna. So Nagoke Bend is basically a bend which a lot of karkus and sheets came from, especially prior to 84. So a biadbi happened in their bend. This is about four or five years ago now. And uh, what happened was a Nagoke Bend, biadbi hogi, they fought, they caught the person who did the biadbi, chopped him into little bits, put him in a bag, and the police came and the police said, where's the guy who killed him? They said, there he is in a bag. They said, who killed him? And the band said, the whole of the village killed him. The whole village stood there, said, we all killed him. Do what you're going to do. Mm. So the Indian media suppressed that and didn't let it get out. We know these things because we, we get the news all the time, even if it's not on the news, you know what I mean? Going backwards and forwards as well. And on the media, you hear something else. On the ground, is something else. Mm. It's very different, like, you know, like Maya on a chakra as well. So the thing is, those things are happening as well. And if you have to think of it like this as well, you know, with the Biyadabi as well. You, some people might not like this terminology, but You could say like Guru Granth Sahib doesn't give Shidi because Guru yeah. stays on it. But Guru Sahib the Shidi Yandi 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 because if we think like on a spiritual level, like some of the weirdos in our calm would say, oh, if you're saying your guru's alive, then why in the Biyad be happening, stopping, Anna? Yeah. But it's a wake-up call to us all the time. It's never stopping, Anna. So the guy, the Marinda Biyad be, he died in jail after getting put, tortured, Anna. Mm. And then that BB who was drinking alcohol, at yeah. she got shot in the head, Anna. So the thing is, it's like these cases are there now. It's not like, but the people who do the Biyad be, the woman at they I don't think they found any ID. And they can't mm. idea. The guy who jumped over the jungle at the Rabar Sahib, no one knows who he ever was. The guy, uh, uh, Marinda, he didn't, he didn't say why he did it. Mm. Yeah. So it's just like, you can't, sometimes you can't get the truth out of these people. Mm. Well, we definitely went for a lot of topics today. We might, we might, we might want to cut some of that at the end. <laughs> Um, we can send it to you afterwards. Keep me out of jail. No, I ain't going to watch it, man. I ain't got time to that. It's got, too long, man. I ain't got, got any of it. Just the last one, in it? I don't know. Uh, but uh, thank you so much for everything that you spoke about, G. It's been an amazing podcast. And I think definitely the whole time I was just sitting in awe with all the topics that we discussed. Um, just the final message to the Sangat, what would you like to finish off with? Um, you know, what do you see the future looking like? That's a bit of a random question that came inside me to ask you. What do you, what do you see in the future? Um, and something to finish off with. The future is bright. The future is orange. Khalistan Banuga. Mm. There's no way about it. Khalistan Banana. And people who got an allergy to Khalistan as a word. Yeah. Khalistan is just a land or a state ruled by the pure. The pure, who are pure spiritualists, every faith believes in those people. Mm. So this isn't about separatism from an Indian state or separatism from Hindus or Muslims. This is about a state ruled by pure ideology, which was done by Maharaja Ranjit Singh, Banda Singh Bahadur, and it will be for the betterment of all citizens who ever live in this state. Mm -hmm. And it's going to happen. No one can stop the movement of history. It will happen. And more than likely it will happen in our lifetimes before we die. Right. Yeah. So it will happen. And if it doesn't happen in my lifetime, I'm not going to be Yeah, I'll have to come back. Yeah, I'll watch it. Yeah. But the thing is, otherwise, it's like, because it's that, you know, that thing, you know, when you got a uh, sort of uh, itcha. itcha so much for something, Anna. 
ਇੱਛਾ ਬ੍ਰਿੰਗ ਯੂ ਬੈਕ ਯੂ ਟੂ ਡੀਪ ਇਨ ਇਟ ਦੈਨ ਯੂ ਆਰ ਇੱਛਾ ਬ੍ਰਿੰਗ ਯੂ ਬੈਕ ਇਨ ਇਟ ਸਾਡਾ ਮੌਕੇ ਜਿਵੇਂ ਹੁਣ ਤੱਕ ਕੰਮ ਨਿਬਰ ਜਿਵੇਂ ਨਹੀਂ ਪਰ ਦ ਥਿੰਗ ਇਜ਼ ਯੈ ਸੋ ਖਾਲਿਸਤਾਨ ਇਟ ਵਿਲ ਹੈਪਨ ਲਾਈਕ ਯੂ ਨੋ ਪੀਪਲ ਗੈਟ ਡਿਪਰੈਸਡ ਟੂ ਕਮ ਐਂਡ ਗੋ ਲਾਈਕ ਯੂ ਸੈਡ ਦਾ ਫੋਰ ਜਸ ਸੇਇੰਗ ਥਿੰਗ 50 ਇਅਰਸ ਹਨ ਚਾਲੀ ਸਾਲ ਹੋ ਗਏ 10 ਸਾਲ ਹੋ ਗਏ ਕਿਤੇ ਕੋਈ ਪੰਗਾ ਪਹੁੰਗਾ ਯੈ ਸੋ ਇਟਸ ਲਾਈਕ ਵੀ ਵੀ ਨੇਵਰ ਲੂਜ਼ ਆਵਰ ਜਜਬਾ ਇਨ ਐਨੀ ਮੂਵਮੈਂਟ ਥਿਸ ਇਜ਼ ਆਰ ਹਿਸਟਰੀ ਵੀ ਗੈਟ ਬੀਟ ਅਪ ਐਂਡ ਦੈਨ ਵੀ ਕਮ ਬੈਕ ਡਬਲ ਟ੍ਰਿਪਲ ਹਨ ਵੀ ਜਸਟ ਕੀਪ ਕਮਿੰਗ ਬੈਕ ਵੀ ਡੋਨਟ ਸਟਾਪ ਦਸ ਆ ਆ ਸਟੋਰੀ ਐਂਡ ਐਸ ਐਸ ਅ ਸਿੰਗ ਨੇਸ਼ਨ ਵੀ ਵਿਲ ਨੇਵਰ ਡਿਫੀਟਡ ਵੀ ਨੇਵਰ ਡਿਫੀਟ ਬਾਈ ਐਨੀ ਨੇਸ਼ਨ ਐਂਡ ਦੈਟਸ ਦਾ ਥ੍ਰੈਟ ਦਾ ਆਲ ਨੇਸ਼ਨਸ ਨੋ ਥੀਸ ਪੀਪਲ ਯੂ ਕਾਨਟ ਕਰਸ਼ ਥੈਮ ਯੂ ਕਾਨਟ ਡਿਸਟਰੋਏ ਥੈਮ ਦੇ ਵਿਲ ਡਿਸਟਰੋਏ ਯੂ ਐਂਡ ਦੇ ਵਿਲ ਕਲੀਅਰ ਯੂ ਆਫ ਦਿ ਫੇਸ ਆਫ ਦਿ ਅਰਥ ਬਿਕਾਜ਼ ਐਨੀ ਪਰਸਨ ਹੂਸ ਕਮ ਅਗੇਂਸਟ ਆਰ ਕਾਮ ਹੈਸ ਬੀਨ ਕਲੀਅਰ ਆਫ ਦਿ ਫੇਸ ਆਫ ਦਿ ਅਰਥ ਦਸ ਜਸਟ ਦਿ ਹਿਸਟਰੀ ਆਫ ਦਿ ਸਿਕਸ ਐਂਡ ਵੀ ਆਰ ਪ੍ਰੋ ਹਿੰਦੂ ਵੀ ਆਰ ਪ੍ਰੋ ਮੁਸਲਿਮ ਵੀ ਆਰ ਪ੍ਰੋ ਐਵਰੀ ਫੇਸ ਵੀ ਆਰ ਨਾਟ ਐਂਟੀ ਐਨੀ ਵਨ ਬਿਕਾਜ਼ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਤਾਂ ਰੱਬ ਸਾਰੇ ਜੇ ਦੱਸਦਾ ਆ so we it's not about like you know how the indian state tries to make into extremism mm. we've just got love for everyone mm. we want every person who's in front of us to have a prashada in their hand mm. and to be able to defend themselves especially in the grief in the grief sikhan ko deh padshahi so maharaj jigan grief sikhan de ne jere meere ohna ohna ni mil ni kos because meere bande nu gijja ne driving his mercedes or his post to work and he can't go on a rickshaw to my khalistan and he can't do it so but that, that's the people who are going to get it is the people who who know hardship and live hardship through their lives because that's who good god sing gives it to mm. yeah. that's a great way to finish off mandeep sing anything you want to say there's not much to add after uh, that right, so ji thank you so yeah, much for coming on the podcast uh, and uh, yeah thank you so much bye good ji bye good ji